two survivors enable remain. microphone please thank you Final survivor. broadcast party chat thank you Combat complete. The there you go fucking piece of garbage <sighs> hey everybody welcome to here and we are not queer bro whoa <laughs> whoa welcome whoa. to broby broby ah <laughs> this is kind of a podcast episode i guess hey, hey. Hey, hey. all right ouch majestic space monkey got fucked by you yeah it's kind of like a podcast episode we're gonna sit back chill Play some Halo 5. Well, me and Dakota will. Dove Kinyugi, Brandon over there is uh, he's here. Uh, we're gonna just is, go ahead. Uh, we're gonna uh, talk bitch. about some things. We're gonna see what we can you do. Right? See you, what kind you, of subjects we can talk it? about. See what mischief we can get into. Even though we don't, we're not really gonna do that. Maybe, probably. Who knows? We might. Um, we're gonna report and people. Yeah. Ow! All right. Squeezy McFeezy. So anyways, what were we talking about? We were on the topic of... What were we talking about? Uh, fighting games kind of losing popularity. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On the topic of fighting Mortal games Kombat X did pretty popularity. dang good. Like, it was easily like one of the best-selling games of like... When did that come out? 2013? Uh, actually about 20... 2012. Yeah. No, it wasn't 2012. 2012 was... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was 2013. I think it was 2013. I think it was about 2013. Yeah, I can look Guys, it up. Guys, we all have phones. Look it up. No, you see, know, no, that's I, what, what that's was I just about to say. That ruins the conversation. We're just we're just gonna keep it, talking. If it's no, wrong, I mean, somebody can. We need to have factual evidence, below. Brandon. I don't know who the fuck is hitting. Oh fuck you! I'm looking it up. Infection no! <sighs> It's 2015, guys. All right, well, we'll we'll fuck with interactivity later. Anyways, hey guys, <laughs> fucking just so just for now. Okay. It was 2015, which honestly so, I thought was way earlier than that. Either way, like I think we well, can dude, agree that like Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat whenever a new Mortal 9 Kombat was comes released out, in 2000, one of the best what, selling. 10? No, a little bit later, True, 2011, yeah. I think. So Mortal Kombat 9 and Skyrim are the same age, but Skyrim has seemed to age a lot better. I don't know, I like Mortal Bethesda. Kombat 9 a lot still. Dude, Mortal Kombat 9 point. fatalities, and my, I, I... Mortal Kombat 9 fatalities, I don't know why, but I enjoy some of them way better than Mortal Kombat 10s. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, it's this weird art style, I, I guess. The reason why, uh, like, fighting you know, games are losing, like, 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 where Shiva just pulls off your skin? Or whatever oh, yeah. reason? That, that's just, that's a thing? Wow, what yeah, a spot. Yeah, I remember that. What a spot for this man. Or he's dead. The, uh... Piddle stinker. <laughs> he just burned. No, the, um... <laughs> what I'm thinking is, uh... Fuck. Uh, uh fucking... <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, Why fighting games have lost yeah. popularity over the years is just because, like, it's literally just that. They they haven't been sought after as much now that we got shooters and, like, open world games. I think it's become more, immersion. like, niche than, like, you know, accepting. Well, of like, course, you, got, you still like, got you know all I mean? your people. Be yeah, you still got all your people who fucking will because I feel be like diehards. I, you know what I, I think feel we like need? you have, like, with fighter games, you have two types of people. You have the people that play it constantly, or you have, like, the casual people. I'm more on the casual side. So, like, I can get into the details know of you. it. Like, I know, I know some things about, like, the frames and frame advantage and stuff, but Dakota. I'm not going to be, like, in-depth on in it. <laughs> Dakota obviously knows what we need, so we're going to ask him what do we need. What do we need, Dakota? We need, we need first-person fighting games. Uh, you know what? Isn't... You know what? Wait, that ain't they, much a of a bad idea. Like that. There's a VR game like that. It's called like Gorn. Technically, that's what uh, like a... Kingdom Come is, kind of. Cause, dude, the, the combat oh, yeah. in that game is actually pretty fucking deep. Like, well, I, say, that isn't there awesome. like a game like Chivalry, or something like yeah. whatever the name of it is? It is. Well, Chivalry is just like uh, like beaten down, on its knees indie version of For Honor, <laughs> and I I don't know. I wouldn't deny that it's better. I've never played it myself, but. 
the fuck? Yeah, I'll, I'll use dusk. Why not? Hey, welcome to the two viewers watching. How are y'all doing tonight? They're gonna beat us up. They're gonna wait till we're sleeping. They're gonna beat us up. That's exactly what's gonna happen. Uh, no, the, uh... <laughs> See, the type of fighting games that I see on the market nowadays are like, you got your Mortal Kombat, you got your Tekkens, Soul Calibur's making a comeback. I think I've seen a lot of like, uh, like, kind of like how Mortal Kombat 9 had like the tag team fighter, where you have like multiple fighters on a team, Damn it, kind of like uh, Marvel vs. <laughs> Capcom. Fucking one of the viewers watching, you son of a bitch. I am yeah. the viewer watching. There's two. <laughs> Oh, it says there's one for me. There's two for me. I'm both things. Brandon, are you one of the other viewers? No. Okay. So, hello, welcome. Well, other oh, now it went down to one. Fuck! Hold you. Dakota, did you leave? Great, I'm a zombie. No, I'm That's still here. You fucking, yeah, I, like I, I said, I'm the viewer. Man, uh No, but you got like a... You got uh games like... Tekken coming out and stuff, and they like they got new ones coming out. Tekken's got new games coming out. Dude, Tek when did Tekken Seven come out? Like that game is like still solid. Like that's a hard uh, fighting game. Haven't played that game. I mean, much. you have Bob, you have a panda, and other than yeah, like those kinds panda. of I guess you can call dope characters. It's like, bro, you have like I really legitimate want... like nice fighters. I really want the new um. The new Tekken game that had come out like last year. That's the one I want real bad. That's uh, that's seven. Yeah, I really want that one. Yeah, seven's seven's a really good one. Um, I never played much Tekken growing up. Uh, I was always Mortal Kombat, and for a little while there, Soul Calibur, strictly. For uh, me, you got it to, like, was mainly. You got to weird games. It was mainly like me. Soul Calibur. Yeah, but well, then you also got your other like fighting games that people don't really expect anymore, and like obviously have fallen off the face of the earth. What is because the, the last what is release the name was... of like that? Um, I know Skull Girls is a really good fighting game. Like Skull. Oh Girls, yeah. Uh, no, you got. Uh, well, of course you got like Street Fighter and stuff. I was talking about uh, Dead or Alive. Wait, Zach, I didn't say Street Fighter. I said Skull Girls, but I mean. No, Jake said Street Fighter. Jake said. Jake, Jake, oh okay. Everybody, woo. <laughs> Cameo appearance. Nah, but you do have games like Street Fighter and stuff. But what were you saying, Skullgirls? Uh, they, that was a pretty good game. Skullgirls is a really good fighting game. That's a great game. I love that. It's on the uh, it's on the phone for like free. Yeah, it's really good. It's well, that's really, pretty cool. It's a really considering good. Considering how it came out on consoles. For, and like, and the art money. and the art style was like great. Well, really it's not as though. like it's not like like you know as intense as a fighting game from phone to you know. From phone yeah, but you console. can only be—it can only be so intense on a phone. Yeah, it's, it's very lewd. I will—I'll say that it's very lewd. Not that's... fully. Like there no, are some characters. That's not... It's like yeah, but like yeah. no, it's—it's uh... it's really lewd. It's—it's it's one of those games, honestly. Not really. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like I mean, there's two Why characters there so many? That are like that out of the entire cast. Exactly. You have you hey, have the nurse up? chick, and then you have well, like, um... all the chicks are very like. I mean. Uh... They're very loony. Like it's, like there's, like there's a girl that has like a demon in her hair that like keeps pulling down her dress. Oh, at least it got oh, you. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Like it's it's well, very loony. That, well, I mean that's not necessarily what this discussion's about though. I mean you can go out and look up all the pictures you want of Skull Girls hentai. I mean I mean go ahead. I was well, uh, I mean like also like you have to think like every I feel like every I fighting mean, game at least has that one weeks. like sexual character. Or unless you got dead or alive, Flight. which is nothing but like taxi characters. Three survivors remain. True. I mean, have you seen Ryu? Like, How it's like I mean, fuck. <laughs> I mean, like the three fighter. You have Chun Li, which I mean, she isn't sexualized, but I mean, like. Uh, well, I mean, she's probably as close as you'll get for like Street Fighter. Yeah. Well, well, does Killer Instinct have a sexual character? A sexualized female? You see, now that like we're putting it into scope, just how many fighting games Maya. there are still going no, no, on. Maya. What's her name? Orkin. Like Orkin. that's whenever you realize that it's literally Orkin, like Orkin God. Is, like as sexualized you can get. Round one. Well, like and I said, whenever you put it into scope, like how many fighting games there actually are, uh, that's whenever it becomes pretty clear. Like holy fuck, we've got more than we realize. Yeah. But what's killer thing is though is it's... good, but I don't like yeah. the business practice. Like you have to buy like, if you don't buy any characters. And you just get the game for free. The only character you have is Jago. That's the 
only character. Oh you have. yeah, I forgot about that. You have really, to buy the, the only rest character. Of the I mean, I got lucky and got the season one and two characters from gold, but they're not making the season three characters free with yeah. gold. Uh, and I mean, it's not, it's, it's not like any of those characters, you know, are like great tier wise, but they're great like play style wise. Like, like they're really fun to play. Like Rash well, yeah. and Arbiter are amazingly fun. Three survivors remain. But then you have General Rom, who is a very big and slow fighter. <laughs> He, it's it's like imagine Ferator, but like half the speed. Oh, that dude! So that like... reminds me. That fucking reminds me. Spo <clears throat> speaking about uh, that, like a uh, rash, dude. Fucking, there's a new Battletoads game coming out. Oh yeah. I oh saw yeah, that. there is. I forgot about and that. fuck, man, that like that's gonna be pretty cool. And uh, Battletoads was a. Uh, See that's that's another thing to make a like a, a like, dude. Uh, I wonder if I wonder topic if they're on. gonna have like that dreaded uh what I call the sea dude level. I don't know the actual oh, name of the level, know. but like probably gonna have you know everything you've ever hated about, from every fucking Battletoads. But uh no, that's another genre that's going out the door even quicker than fighting games are like the beat 'em up Round genre. Four. Which you could probably technically fall into place with like Devil May Cry and stuff, and which they, those are technically beat 'em up games, but like, well, like, well, like the weird thing is, is not that, like, almost anything could classify as a beat 'em up. Like beat 'em up is kind of like a weird like, it's not black and white, Infection like in a oh, weird way. <laughs> yeah, like like well, uh, that's what like, I'm saying. Streets like, of Rage, Streets of Rage was very much just straight beat 'em up, straightforward. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking guys. like games like uh, Double Dragon, Final Fight, uh, Akari Warriors. Exactly. Yeah. which Akari Warriors was more of a shooter. Uh, which which is kind of it's kind of like it kind of makes you ask like what constitutes a beat 'em up? Is it like just beating up a massive group of enemies? Because like, it is, uh, then, then, you know, like, Nart. Do you remember Nart? I, I think I Nart. red and blue guy running down the street. Like you get to arrest people. You're busted. You know, like and then like the money oh, flies yeah. up into the. That game yeah. is like one of the few games considered like a shooter and beat 'em up because I mean, it's huge hordes of enemies, which you beat up, and you're able to get like power ups and stuff to help you along the way. Like uh, like like I said, just look up Final Fight or something like of the sort, and you gotta pretty much beat 'em up. Like Metal Slug is a shooter. Like there, there's games that are similar, but are more shooter than beat 'em up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's like, uh, but heading on back into like the topic of fighting games and stuff, like you're seeing them make a comeback. We got like another Soul Calibur coming out, and another Tekken down the line. Eventually, I'm not gonna fucking doubt it. Another Mortal Kombat. Which, They've already confirmed that shit happening. Injustice. The one thing that I will say about fighting games that it seems like not a lot of people talk about is like what like is there like a line when it comes to guest characters with fighting games yes as long as I get six, the rights, I mean... oh, yes yeah. there's a line that has I, to be drawn I, I feel like Geralt is like a really good fit for Soul Calibur but I feel like at what point is it like too far okay. for that game here's here's how I feel so Smash Brothers is a very good example of where a line should be drawn and where a line shouldn't be drawn. Um, Smash Brothers is like a fighting game. Yeah, I just I, I mean it is a fighting game. But that's like it, a type of that's the type of fighting game you don't think about is like the super hyper. No, because it's fucking it's 3D, not 3D necessarily. It's um, it's like a multi-platform. Like, yeah, Honestly, multi -platform it's like a platform fighting game. It's like a beat em up. It's, just, it's fighter, still side scrolling. Fighter. It's still a side scroll fighting game, but it's not on the same scale as like Tekken or Street Fighter. There's not only is there just you know. There's that's not two people. There's fucking like twelve and then or eight and and it's got a whole cast of like Nintendo characters and this and that, blah blah blah. And, yeah. And it's yeah. it's great because like, you know Dude, Smash Bros Ultimate, but, by the way. I'm not gonna try to turn this into a hype stream, but oh, fuck, I'm ready for it. Oh my god, you don't fucking understand. Like I I wish <laughs> I had a Smash Brothers game like melee that I could play all day and just fucking train for it. You don't have Smash Brothers. You don't have like four. You don't have melee. I don't all? have four. But I don't have any of them. Oh yeah, you I don't still have, have your my 3DS. 3DS. And either way, I don't like playing it on that little screen, anyways. So that's one reason why it I love bother the 3DS. Me. I love the 3DS version specifically because I've always wanted a portable Super Smash Brothers, and I got it, and that was what made me happy. Now it's coming to Switch. And Brandon, are you gonna get Smash for the Switch? I would see no reason why he wouldn't, and he better. So, like, I, so, there, 
like okay let's let's just say um like do you care if we talk about smash for a little bit longer uh well it's a subject about fighting games and brandon if don't worry i'll i'll give you your turn we'll be able to talk about soul Calibur here soon if you want uh i see no point in avoiding a talk about smash so like i found the combat evolved pistol oh fuck give me that give me that give that here i, I want it come here, come here to me oh man it. give me that <laughs> give it i don't know where you're at where the fuck you at there you are just straight Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, who was the character I was supposed to play as? Shit, boy, here's a shot. Uh, anyways, so like, yeah, I'll just take well, ammo for it. But like, yeah. so, I, me personally, like, I was gonna pull up a list and go down the list of the characters that are gonna be in it. Um, not Ooh. necessarily like go down not, oh, each character on. individually. Yeah. But I was going to talk about like which characters I felt like do not belong in Smash. Well, I'll tell you uh -oh. one right now. That's fucking Bayonetta. We already know that. Honestly, Bayonetta I don't feel like, I feel like I mean, Bayonetta she's cool. She's cool. I feel she like is Bayonetta cool. Is like a, I, see, but you can't really get mad at that because that was a fan vote. And, of course, they're going to want Bayonetta in there. Well, yeah. Yeah. The minute, like, you give the fans, like, the choice, I, they're going to get what they need. Sniper, I don't want that. Um, I, It's okay, kind of so like, like if you had a vote you know, like for, like, said. SoCal I can't, 2 for Link. I can't bitch about her. Right. But, like, she is... I mean, it was even bad to, like, whenever they were doing the finals, she was, like, oh, she was shit. just so overpowered and, like, just dumb that people were, like, wow, this is awful. And, you know, for the Smash World Tournament, you know, for the Smash World Tournament, the guy played as, uh... Didn't they... Oh, no, they didn't ban her, did they? Oh, excuse me. But they no, banned her in, like, the England, tournament. they banned her. Oh. But in, like, well, in I mean, the you're, Smash you're World Tournament... She, um, it was, it was so bad that someone was playing as Bayonetta and the other one was like Mario or Fox or something like that. I don't remember, Ooh. but she literally like, she took someone oh, from zero oh, to death. Fuck. Like that's, to use it. and that's a really shitty, like, that is like a very bad, like, from uh, zero to stat. death. That's really, really bad. And then on top of that, like. They're not. They but haven't fixed what's he able to do that consistently, though? Yes. Because I'll say I know on uh, in a one v one she can zero to death you. If she, I know, she like, has combos kind of that's too bad. Combat it's kind of like Devora on Mortal Kombat. Like there's an infinite combo you can do with her. We don't and, like, fucking talk about it. But it's Devora. not consistent. Round two. Well, like, well, like with that combo though, it's not consistent. So that's why I was asking, was it consistent or not? Because if it if it was, and that's just crazy. The uh. See, the thing about Super Smash Bros. is another character I don't feel like belongs. I mean, he has more right, of course, than Bayonetta wow. or something. Actually, no. Ryu. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't think Ryu should be in it. I, I like him, like, don't get me wrong. He's a really fun character to I mean, play as, but I, Cloud, I, don't, I don't believe he belongs Cloud in there. technically deserves the right to be in there more so Proceed. than Ryu. I just the simple assassinated fact that someone. Final Fantasy was on the Nintendo Entertainment System before it was ever on any other like system to begin with. So technically, really quick, Final Fantasy started out as Nintendo. Why what? is that assassination in the game? That's awesome. I don't know what you're talking about. I just, I just assassinated somebody and like I picked them up and jammed oh, my sword through their rib cage. Oh. I don't know. Nice. But, uh... I guess it's like a sword-only kind of assassination. But anyways, well, yeah. uh, back to what you were saying. Like, yeah, it, uh, really Final quick Fantasy with Bayonetta, started out as Nintendo. Uh, with Bayonetta, she, like... Her combo, once you're in that combo, you can't get out of it. Like, it's... As soon as that person starts initiating that combo, uh, I mean, it's it's Come over on. for you. you. There we go. You, like, you might as well just quit, because, like... There's nothing you can do. It's it's awful. That's why people are so mad at her. She was even banned in tournaments in the UK. Are you sure it's in the UK? I'm just wanting to make I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure it was UK. It was like a very big area. Oh bullshit. But she was banned. Like maybe it wasn't even UK, but she was definitely banned. Well, I don't doubt that she was banned because I remember in, like, I would say, a part I remember, of the world. Yeah, I remember somebody being banned from competitive as well. Uh, I just, I feel like Ryu doesn't deserve a spot for the simple fact that, I mean, exactly. oh, come the fuck on! 
I don't feel like he deserves a spot for the simple fact that he, uh, he just, I mean, he's a fighter character, sure. So, I mean, he, of course, deserves a spot, if any. I'm not going to sit here and call his, uh, whole deal blasphemy or anything. I'm not going to try to, like, curse anybody out for voting for him or anything. But it's just, like, well, like Street I was, Fighter, yeah. I mean, it's just more of a series centralized on other systems besides Nintendo. Sure, it's been on Nintendo systems before. Um... But I don't know, like, I, I feel like it's just weird. Like, the way his combos go against literally everyone else's in Smashes, his combos, of course, flow smoothly. That's fucking awesome. It's good that he, like, they the way they worked it in and everything. But it's like, his combos work like they do in Street Fighter, which doesn't work in Smash. Of course, they toned it down, but when you bring in, a, like, a certain fighting style from another game into a game that has a different fighting style entirely, it's a little weird. To deal with. Um, my my whole shtick on Ryu is I was you know I was like yeah that's pretty cool like he's gonna be in the game, he's gonna oh, be a good cool. character he's, he's you know he's he um like I feel like he's gonna do some good and he does a lot of good justice to the game. Uh, I mean even the creator of uh, Smash Brothers was like the reason why I added Ryu is because he's got like the move sets that he uses in game. Like, in Street Fighter are very, very, like, they're just very nice. And they they flow well together with, um, the Smash Brothers series. So, like... Yeah, it's true. I mean, like I said, they made it flow well. They made, like, the combos, like, execute well. It's just, like... The way you execute the button combos and stuff like that, of course some people are going to get it. Of course, like the people who like die hard have played Street Fighter all the time, you know, they're going to get it. They're going to fucking know how to pull off those combos and they're going to get used to it faster than anybody. But people like me who are just trying to be casual and stuff and who don't get into arcade fighters much, that's a little in the weird territory and it's just going to... Like, I want to play Ryu, but every time I do, it's just more like, I don't want to take the time to try to learn his combos and stuff. See, yeah, and that's, that's where you that's get kind of into the honestly. divide of casual and like... Like, I'm not gonna say die hard, but like, oh. people that play the game, like, way more than a casual would. You people know? that really care. Oh, but, um, it's Smash Bros. Like... And I play it way more than a casual, like, would do. Like, I mean, I'm not saying anybody is casual. It's just more like, I just don't have, like, it's, it's like it's you have weird. to change your playing style with him. I'm, exactly. I'm in a, in a game oh, okay. where I don't feel like I should have to learn those types of combos. But I gotta take the time out of my day to learn those types of combos, which, that's honestly just me complaining at this point over nothing, because, I mean, people do it, and, you know, good good luck to them. But to me, it's more like, this ain't Mortal Kombat, this ain't Street Fighter, I, I should just be able to, you know, smash and, like, just have a few little fun matches with my friends and stuff. But, no, they pick Ryu and execute combos that would rock my fucking socks off, and they do nothing but pick Ryu and... Here I am over here playing well, like, Mario well, like, or something. That's kind of the thing, though. It's like, this is the one thing with, on, if you're going to be playing a fighting game online, it's like, you basically have to go down the entire roster and pick one character to play, and that's the only character you can play. Yeah, true. Because yeah. that's how it basically is online. Like, Zach, online, you play nothing but Liu Kang. On more combat for me, it'd probably be Alien at this point. So, like, you basically pick your character and you know their combos. So it's kind of it's, it's kind of weird. I was like, you have to devote your entire gaming career on that game, to like yeah. just the character. Well, how I feel is um, let's play like some regular Slayer or something. All right, I got you. Uh, For the people who might be watching this and hearing the audio and everything and whatnot, if we do somehow make this into a podcast, we're playing Halo Five. To me, so that's the stuff you're hearing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> just, I. This the fair warning. I don't yeah. like the fact that I don't I don't really know how to word it. Like Bayonetta, she's just kind of she's just kind of broken right now. Like I believe she can be fixed. Um. Uh, I, I don't know. Another character well, now, I believe that doesn't really belong in the game is Cloud. Like I I personally don't think Cloud should be in the game, but. He has very nice move sets. He's very he easy to learn, and he fits. You know, he he personally like he fits in. But to me, I'm like, I don't because like 
wasn't Final Fantasy mainly um, PlayStation for like a long time, and PlayStation and Nintendo had their beef whenever Final uh, Fantasy first ever came out? See, Final Fantasy started out on Nintendo systems with Final Fantasy 1, of course. Uh... Bye to the viewer who just left, by the way. You guys have a good one. I don't know. Like, I mean, you're already gone. I don't know why I'm saying that. But, uh... See, Final Fantasy started out on Nintendo and lasted on Nintendo systems all the way up until, I would say, around Final Fantasy... Uh, well, 4 was, like, on Super Nintendo. I know that much. Because Final That's Fantasy have, has a weird history over here in uh, America because our games are, like, several games behind theirs. Our Final Fantasy 4 is, like, their Final Fantasy 6 or some bullshit or like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's like trading card games. Like we get a set time, way after they get it. Yeah, like over time, somehow things changed, and Final Fantasy moved over to PlayStation. And I think it's whenever Square started working more with PlayStation, uh, which did happen. Square moved on to play like and make games with PlayStation and Sony. Wait, Square as in like Square before Square Enix or Square Enix? Square before Square Enix, because Square oh, okay. and Square the Enix molded together they later on together. down the line. Oh, okay. Because oh, okay. there's oh. games on uh, PS1, which I had, but I sold to Media Vault. Uh, Legends of Mana, Shout out to stuff like that, all made from Square before the oh, like, okay. inductment of Square Enix. Uh, once they moved over to there, they fucking they took Final Fantasy and everything, and we're just like, here you go, this is, this is Sony's now. So, for the most part, yeah, for the so longest sword, time, uh, for the longest time, yeah, they were PlayStation only. But then they started kind of filtering back into Nintendo. That's why you got some, like, Final Fantasy uh, Crystal Chronicles and stuff like that on DS. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance on the Game Boy Advance. Um, got other games like uh, Dissidia and uh, Theatrhythm on the 3DS and stuff. But, of course, those are all, like, spinoff games and stuff, and you see most of the games, like, Final Fantasy XV appearing on Xbox 360 and, uh, PS4 and stuff, and not really anywhere else. So... Now, just saying this, I've never really played Smash, really at all. The one thing that I've seen, at least just from, like, my point of view on it, Samus has always been, like, a good character. Like just consistently throughout the games, I would say my least favorite like, game like, to play as her in would be melee for some reason. I don't know why, but I don't know what it is about melee here lately that whenever I play it, unless it's a character that I played a lot during the days that I played melee, I can't play them. And I think it's just because you get so used to the meta and uh, feel of the new games that it you know it it, it just feels different. Uh, but Melee is still a good, solid game. It's definitely the best in Smash, of course, you know. You're gonna have everybody tell you that. You ask them, what's the best Smash Brothers game? It's gonna be Melee. It's Melee. It, it, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, there's no... I mean, thank you, Zach, for that, but I mean, that doesn't... That doesn't answer the thing of me bringing up Samus. Well, I mean, she is a good character to use in most Smash games. I was giving my personal opinion on it, Brandon. Except, you know, it oh, except fuck yeah, fart. Okay. I, I see what you... <laughs> I, 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 I blanked out on that, yeah, okay. I, I see what you mean now. Just every game but melee, <laughs> she's good on. I see what you mean. For now. me, yeah. for me personally, the, I mean, she's a good character in every game. For me personally, it was just melee that being a little bit weird. Uh, and she changes in brawl, so, of so course. Me because so wait, so wait, Smash melee is kind of like the new Vegas of Smash. Uh, you uh, ask yeah. whatever the, you ask what Super Smash Bros. Stank Tank, oh yeah, he's in the chat. What's up, Stank Tank? He replied, melee is good. Right? Uh. It is. It is. Yeah, melee is definitely really good. Uh, it's, it is, of course, the best. Like, I'll, I will agree with that. I've played melee countless hours. Uh, my my, my second game's favorite used to be Brawl. The fuck? Yeah, they're lagging on the other team. But uh, we had someone Brawl, leave. for the longest time, was my second favorite. Like Brandon, I don't Wasn't know. You Brawl the one that over. came out in like like mid like two thousands, two thousand nine, I believe, two thousand eight. Okay, came out on the Wii. I think that's the one. Like I'm, because I think that was that the one dude's carrying Smash the team. game that I saw, and like the cover art looked amazing. And I was like, bro. Which to one? To most people, game. to most people, Brawl is the worst game. 
Oh, it is. Brawl is the we uh, the weakest link because it's the least balanced. Characters are nowhere near. Uh, oh like, my like, god! My aim and the what? So kind of so kind of like the first injustice. Cause like eh, kind of. Cause like dude, cause dude, like the first injustice dude, you had some really walky matchups. Well, the like, other thing about like, Brawl uh, is the like fact that General Zod and Lobo would be like a one nine matchup, meaning that General Zod would win one out of ten matchups against Lobo. So but like they had the really head. unbalanced. Like, they had really unbalanced matchups there for some reason. It's true, it's true. Stank Tank said shut. <laughs> shut, like, shut up. Like, oh, so you like Brawl? I mean, I like Brawl. I fucking spent 10 hours on that game straight the first day I got it. More, actually. I just know because I got the achievement in the, uh, in the, what is it? The, uh, oh, the, like, the challenge. Did the Wii give you achievements? No, there was like this challenge no, we, thing that you got oh, in the game we, no, that gave Smash you like Brothers, new characters. There are technically achievements specifically. Yeah, for well, Smash technically Brothers. that's like what I'm saying. The challenge. I haven't played the Wii in like years. Stank so Tank said was Brawl like, was it, the best. Did it give you achievements? To me, Brawl was the best for the longest time. Uh, what Brawl the fuck is amazing ever? to me. The amount of fighters, the amount like you know, huh? This podcast is going to be interesting with snippets of the Kodo raid. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to just stay calm. I die a lot, but I don't care. But, uh... So, like, the one thing that I find weird is that, like, if you, like, even if you didn't know, like, this is going away from Smash a little bit, but, like, even if you didn't know Injustice and Mortal Kombat ever, were made whatever. by the same studios, like, you could tell from, like, the, like, animation and, like, the way, like, the gameplay looks that it's very much made by the same developer. Studio. Wait, which game? Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat. X. Oh, like Mortal yeah. Kombat Injustice. No, they definitely have like the same graphical style. They definitely have like the same feel to it. Now, now compare, now comparing the first Injustice to Mortal Kombat 9 is pretty different, because you know, first definitely. Injustice went with a comic book art style, which is it's interesting, but like going from that to Injustice 2 or vice versa, it throws throws it at least uh, throws me off a little bit. Ah, uh, like, I'm just gonna go ahead and go. Oh, 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 no, 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 thing, The one thing yeah. the first Injustice didn't do good is that, like, like I said, if they were really wonky, miss, like, like, mismatched matchups, they just kind of didn't care. Oh, bullshit. Like, they were just, like, their DLC characters were, like, the strongest characters in the game, minus Martian yeah. Manhunter. Yeah. The Martian Manhunter was, like, easily the best character on that game. Well, you see, wow, you got, like, the same kind of deal. So bad on my you screen. got the same kind of deal. With like, I was gonna butt say, I was gonna say, I'm just gonna let him finish his rage. Moment. But uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying not to get fucking mad. But like, they're like <laughs> lagging all over the side of the screen, and this dude with the oh. sword has killed me 18 fucking times. All right, all right. I mean, hey, we're about to be out of this match anyway. But uh, editor, editor that out. Editor, get yeah. it out of here. Get it the we fuck out of here. <laughs> here. <laughs> Zach, I think you're the editor here. Bastard, so, uh, where'd you go? You're right. <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> I'll say the only thing I could edit on is Windows yeah, Movie Maker, so, uh, yeah, I guess, I well, same here. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> Anyways, well. back to the discussion. What's happening yeah. is, uh. Yes. Art Injustice got the same kind of deal with, uh, like, uh, like Smash Bros. coming out. Like, it's just kind of. Like, they come out with a second game, or like a newer game, and I feel like Injustice is gonna do it down the line. But each of them feel similar enough, but new enough to like keep your attention. Like you can tell, oh fuck, this is injustice, you know. I'm, like, I just you... every time I try to start firing at one of them, and I'm like, oh, I'm firing at them. Here, here we go. Like, I'm talking about the, the kill. Game again. A third person is like, <laughs> yeah. comes up on me. All right, all right. Makes it so, just so motherfucking unfair. Uh, well, I don't want to be in this match oh, any longer than you do, but lagging, it's already almost he's done. Lagging. He's lagging, yeah. and I can't see him. And they're all over the motherfucking place. I hate this. Game. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna send you a picture on Instagram. Don't, don't talk about it in the podcast. Just look at it and then react fucking to it. And then the don't fuck's say wrong with everybody? It. <laughs> all right. I'm I just letting you know because I don't want you to. The, I don't uh, want to bring it up because it'll get us off topic more than what we kind of already are. Oh, what so, the uh, fuck? You were saying about the. You were saying about DLC Game characters, included. right? Whatever. Included. Whatever. Yeah, Injustice uh, is having the same type of deal. Like, bro I mean, Injustice came out first. So technically, Super Smash Brothers started having the same type of deal where, like, every DLC character that came out 
seemed like that was the fucking most OP motherfucker you could get. Yeah, because I which feel stands like, true. Which I feel like it's kind of like um, I just said like a lot, Jesus. Whenever they come out with a new character, it feels like their move set counters like a certain meta pick. Well, it's like like that's what it seems. That's what it seems like yeah, a lot. They come out, they got new move sets, and then it's just like, hey, guess what? Fucking fuck everything else you've ever thought in this game. Like I know when Batgirl came out on the first Injustice, he just countered everybody that wanted to turtle up. Cause he had a her like a special ability was that he could change her blade gauntlets into um, yeah like uh, electric gauntlets and the electric gauntlets I remember that. did more damage I remember that. to punch combos and her blade gauntlets did more damage e if you blocked them so it did um, high tip damage. Can I yeah? Can I make a statement real quick? This is about Halo Five. No. <laughs> you may. It's about Smash. <laughs> All right, you may. Okay. I'm I'm super excited. I can't wait to play it. I'm never ever ever gonna play multiplayer, um, eight, like, eight player. Oh, oh the eight player smash. I I'm never gonna play it multiplayer. <laughs> I don't blame you for that. I will play That's it cool. alone or with a friend. And, um, just just like, like to point out that. You can do like a Forrest uh, Gump, and like you're just gonna be like, "That's all like, I have to say about that." <laughs> like I said, I'm super excited, big fan. Can't wait. Man, I'm really excited for the new Smash Bros. And I think, like, and I'm not trying to like Love dismiss any topics, or, me. like that we had going on or anything like about any of it. But, uh, you. Yeah, he's starting to kind of worry me. Uh, but I think we've talked Back long enough saying. about Smash Bros. I, I think, you finish your I think the new course. Smash, I think I'm the new not, Smash has kind of been overshadowed by Waluigi drama. Like that's just my opinion. I'm not 100% at all excited for all the characters that can fucking counter. It's gonna definitely be oh, interesting yeah. to see how they try to balance this all out, but they're it, not. We'll they're see. Not gonna balance wait, them. wait, wait. How they're does the bad. mechanic work? They because... they press a button and whenever you punch them. And they have, they have, like, so, they initiate the counter, basically. So, like, it'll show them, like, block, like, hold their sword up. And they'll Oh, you mean, like, that perfect bit. block or whatever thing that they're coming out with? No. No, 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 no. It's counter. Fucking, like, Lucina. And... How do you know it's still gonna even be a thing in that, though? Like, I mean, maybe Because they, they said they're not changing people's movesets. Except for very few. But, here's, here's my point. What happens is like so Lucina basically will like hold her sword up and she'll kind of fade a little bit, and then you'll like you will. Well, I know what you're talking about. I've seen it in Smash Four. You will 4. hit her. Well, Brandon's wanting to know how it works. You'll hit her, and she will basically counter you and hit you with like four times the damage you put into them. That kind of sounds a lot like how uh. I, don't, I can't remember if Mortal Kombat has it, but Injustice has it a lot. Like how Black Canary will put up her hand, and if you punch into that, then she'll, like, do an armbar on you, and then counter the move. She'll, like, smack your fucking mouth. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. that, but except in Smash, it does, like, way more damage. Yes. Kind and of Smash, it's like, really retarded. kind of... Kind and of then Bayonetta has one of those, and that's also another way that initiates her fucking combo. She's like, hur -dur 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 -dur, and you, you hit her, <laughs> and then she like slows down time, and then fucking starts her combo and takes you from zero to death. And it's retarded. Well, so, look, here's the way that to... you go ahead. I would say the one thing that I find kind of interesting is how Smash is one of the few fighting games where you don't really have zones. Like, again, I've never played Tekken, I haven't played like a lot of other fighting games other than Injustice and Mortal Kombat. But like, Smash has like doesn't really have this seem doesn't seem to have like any kind of zoning where like somebody can just sit there and use like ranged attacks on you the entire game without you being able oh, like, to like, easily get over to them. Well, they can, but ranged attacks in uh, Smash are like ranged literally just like Smash are like they're like little flicks on the ear. Like it's nothing. They just kind of like, like yeah, it builds holds up. you back a little bit it, and like like Fox, for instance. So it's like zoning that's is a really kind good of example. useless. 
Yes. Well, Fox, he can fucking you have you up in like a little loop with his pistol, but it's not gonna do much damage as long as you can get out of it real fast. Which it's easy to get out of anything somebody's throwing at you. Like it may seem like you're stuck, but you will you're able to get out of it. It's not like Starfire and it does it too. The Napal turret, she became a zoning machine. Like you're stuck on full screen with her. So just <laughs> fire lasers. And if you get close to her, she'll just whoop to the other side. And it's like, oh great. Well, I mean, Honestly, I it's think like the whole like Jackie talks. Briggs thing. The what? full auto oh. Jackie Briggs. You I know how he can yeah. just do that constant machine gun gauntlet. Let's just go on and go on. Yeah, I remember that now that I think about it. Well, like any of like Nether Realm. Nether Realm has midway. a big kind of zoning problem, it seems. I was gonna say any type of game that they like put out, like all have a similar feel. Like you, you play Injustice, you can feel Mortal Kombat in it. You play Mortal Kombat, yeah. you can but feel the new the one, Injustice. In but it. the one thing about that is that Mortal Kombat has a block button. Injustice does not. <laughs> you have to move back to block on Injustice and Injustice 2. On Mortal Kombat, you have to hold right trigger. R R2. We see Smash there. has like a little bit of like a block bubble thing that they got going on. It's not necessarily like you hold up your hands and then they hit your hands. It's like this literal like disc that forms around you and you can use it to block but you can't stay blocked forever because whenever you do it'll break and it'll actually put you and in then a you're stun stunned? block. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Oh god. Oh shit, Zach help me. Zach help me. Ow. Well, hold on. Uh, Zach, I know this is going back really far into what we were talking about. But with beat em ups, couldn't you technically classify like Assassin's Creed as a beat em up? Potentially. A stealth beat em up? Yeah, I could probably see that. Especially, especially Syndicate. Especially Syndicate, yes. Because you just, you're just constantly beating up people in that game. Like, you, you can be a sneaky if you like, want. You, it, you, always end up, you always end up getting in like a 5v1 fight. Yeah, and people so. always try to separate things into like different subcategories. Like you got, uh, oh, beat em ups, oh, oh, but brawlers, you know, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a brawler, you're not looking at a beat em up. And I'm just like, that's the same thing. Brawlers are literally just like maybe like beat em ups more in tuned with the fighting. Because like beat em ups are like going back to this old time of, uh, I feel like beat em ups is kind of more of like you you seem to press like like one or two, maybe three buttons. Do it's your a punch, job. kick, and then that's it. Yeah. And then like a And you wanna go move, back you, know, you wanna go back to fighting games like, like back in their extreme like beginnings and stuff, you gotta look at punch out. Oh yeah. Punch out, man, like it had another game. We're getting to a whole different thing, because remember back then those games were made to be as difficult as possible. Why every match that we exactly. played, there's like one guy on the enemy team that's fucking carrying them and we can't do shit. Because that's how Halo 5 is anymore with all the sweaties. But, uh... Your opponents are the thing really is about, um... <sighs> they're, seriously, watch Late Night Gaming and watch his review on it and you'll see what I mean. But, uh... Going back out to punch out and stuff like that. All that type of deal. Uh, see, Punch Out like was like the first game that was. Smash to punch out. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get off the subject like kind of, an, of Smash like because I mean we've been on it forever, and like we're trying to do yeah, like Smash fighting games as a good whole. To talk about it's one of the most hyped fighting game right now. Yeah, I we mean, gotta talk about all fighting games. Yeah, it's like, oh fuck me, I just got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's Soul Calibur Six. There's like a. Uh, I don't necessarily know if a new Tekken has been announced, but I have a feeling that one has been. I just haven't been keeping up with news on I this. Feel like since it's I don't play Tekken soon. much. I feel like it's probably coming up soon, if not already. Yeah. Well, the thing about Soul Calibur is that literally nothing much has come out about it. Smash, we already know well, like some major well, stuff thing, about it. Well, like the one thing about Soul Calibur Six that they're, I feel like it's a good decision, kind of business-wise. They're going back before, like I think the first or second Soul Calibur. So you have all the, the original wise? characters. Yeah. So like, I think they're doing that because like. Zach, you know how poorly received Soul Calibur V was because of the new cast. They because tried to bring in a whole different Pira, cast, which Wide. tried to take tried, over most of the move sets and stuff of the older characters. Yeah, like remember Alpha Patroclus what? who had Setsuka's move set? How? Exactly. And you're just like, no. But like, but like, here's the thing though. I think they were trying to do what Mortal Kombat 10 did. But they were saying, yeah, you have the old generation of like Scorpion, Sub-Zero, 
Kwon Chi, Johnny Cage, but now you have the new generation coming up of Hoon Jin, Cassie Cage, and all of them. So, which, like, I think honestly, they tried to do that, but they went in too hard, too quick. Well, yeah, which honestly a lot of people like, were excited about, but to me, honestly, also, Mortal Kombat X was not it. good in that regard. I didn't want a new cast, if I had to be completely honest. Well, like, I feel like you kind of, it's kind of, because, like, what would you do after Mortal Kombat 9? Because, like, Kung Lao's dead, Katana's dead, uh, Luke Yeah, but then dead. they ended up bringing them back all, like, just to begin with, which, of course, not in the story, but, but they brought, brought, brought them back well, as Revenants. Well, like, they brought them back as Revenants, which I kind of like, but, like, at the same time, it's like, mmm. Well, Mortal Kombat I'm... was hardly ever played for its storytelling capabilities. I mean, let's just get down to the wire for that and right now. I mean, that's... That's true. Like, you, you know, play it, you get a little bit of a story to lead you along, keep time. you interested. Yeah, and then, like, you're just like, oh, never mind. It's just all about the fighting, which it was. It still is. I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of weirded out by, like, how they killed off Baraka. Baraka's not in the game at all. They kill off Melina in the storyline. Spoiler alert for anybody that's not played Mortal Kombat 10, by the way. They kill off Melina in the storyline. She's in the hey, game. Hey, she's back. <laughs> I don't- I guess I'm just salty because Brock was one of my favorite characters. I guess I'm just salty well, about that, Well, they did that, that kind so. of with Soul Calibur as well. I mean, they killed off characters that you literally just see them in the next game, and you're like, wait a minute. D yeah, Of course, that yeah. didn't happen much. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's- that's kinda true. I mean... Like, you killed somebody, I'm and still you see them in the next game, and you're like, I'm still wondering how Mitsurugi is, like, looking the same age. Like, except well, for they Soul went... Calibur 5. In Soul Calibur you 5, said they went back he looks before... like he aged, like, 10 years. Stank Tank said, I want to play Wario in Smash. Bruh, right? Hey, Stank Tank, thanks for the follow. <laughs> Wario. Thank you, Wario, thank you. I want to play. I'm going to play Wario as um, Smash is actually Young bad. Link. I'm going to play as Dude. Young Link, and here's why. Um, Fucking love so Young Link. So, Adult Link, um, like, the Link in this game now, he has a, a totally different moveset. Adult Link? Oh, yeah, because it's yes, Breath of the, the Wild. New, like, yeah, this Breath of the Wild Link is going to have a totally different new moveset than, like, the previous games. But, Young Link is taking over that moveset. That's badass, man. Interesting. So the moveset that we're used to from Link is going to be like Brandon's taking it. We're right back to the concept of Smash, which I, honestly, it's... The conversation will take us where well, it needs to take us. Well, no, well, I'm I mean, fine with like, it. Well, I mean, like, I was going to say how, like... I was going to bring up how you can now play as Link on Mario Kart 8. Oh yeah, well you can play as Breath of the Wild Link now, up in, uh, coming up in a uh, update. But, yeah, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, I didn't, here's I the didn't, thing I didn't about, uh, that. Oh, no, Brandon, what we were here. talking about with Young Link, is uh, in Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, they had two different Links. They had Adult Link from Ocarina of Time, which was taking over his place from the Super Smash Bros. 64 game. Uh, and then you had Young Link from Ocarina of Time as well. It was literally like a copy character, sort of like Dr. Mario is to Mario. Except Young Link was faster, he jumped higher, uh, took uh, more He's damage, more, I believe, like something it, like that. He's lighter so frame, pretty much. That Young Link had those, ca those, those qualities. It's like he's weaker but faster, is pretty much what I'm saying. So you're trading him power for speed and maneuverability. Okay. Exactly. That makes sense. Which they dealt, they done away with in Brawl. For the most part, because Young Link and Brawl was replaced with Toon Link from the Wind Waker, like the Wind Waker series. Okay, the thing about that is, is Wind Waker is literally just Young Link, except they made him even faster, gave him a few different moves, and was pretty much just like, oh, you know what, there he is. But he's pretty much technically just the same as Young Link, except he's just a little bit faster, a little bit like, you know, he's got new voices, you know, the, the, the works. Uh, yeah. Well, Toon Link kept his place all the way up until, like, Smash 4, and is still in Ultimate, of course. But now they're bringing Young Link back. Toon Link is going to keep his old moveset. They're bringing move set. everybody back. Exactly. Okay, so, Brandon, you ever played Mortal Kombat uh, Gold? Which one was that again? Remind me. There's a game called Mortal Kombat Thank Gold you. Slash, and there's, like, another one, of course. Uh, Armageddon. <laughs> uh... Before Armageddon, there was a Mortal Kombat game that I've, had... Well, go ahead. The ones I've played are X, 9, Shaolin, Monk, and Armageddon. Those are the Mortal Kombat okay. I've played. Okay, so here's the thing about Armageddon. 
Armageddon at the time, of course, not now because they've added was, people. That was like the end all be all from. They Mortal had Kombat. yeah, that was the end all be all. Ultimate Mortal Kombat had every single fighter from every game in the entire history of Mortal Kombat. With the worst Mortal fatality Com system ever. Uh, it was me. It was me. I, well, I mean, I'll, I'll agree. Well, I mean, it makes sense because you have 64 characters and try to give them all individual fatalities exactly. that are completely unique. It's and difficult. The, so before that, though, them. before that, though. Oh, fuck yeah. Speaking of which, 30 fucking fall. I don't know why, but 30 followers. Woohoo. Oh, fucking. I don't know. <laughs> I just got excited about that. I just saw that. It goes to another. Here's, here's to another 30. Here's to another 30, man. Uh, sorry about that. Just ran, random excitement out of the way, though. Uh, before Armageddon, uh, Mortal Kombat actually had another game that did the same exact thing called Mortal Kombat Gold. Uh, it was either Mortal Kombat Gold or Trilogy. I'm pretty sure it's Gold. Uh, Gold added in every single Mortal Kombat character up to that point into one game, and uh, but like it was in the like format of the in, like the original game, like inside like the 2D and all that. Oh, and okay. In that game, you had clone characters. You had, uh, you had, what was it? You had Mortal Kombat 3 Sub-Zero, I believe, uh, Classic Sub-Zero, and I think that was it. Both it of them pretty much the same. Then, right? Yeah, and they're like, they're basically the same thing, but their moves differ just slightly and just enough that they can be different fighters. Of course, yeah. Echo fighters. Except for the fact that they both played exactly the same, which is the case in Smash Bros. See, in Super Smash Bros, Dr. Mario compared to Mario, you think nothing's different. When actually, Dr. Mario is actually slower, because, uh, like, in the whole, like, lore of it, they're like, oh, you know, he put on a few extra pounds by becoming a doctor and not working out as much. They literally said that in Melee. Uh, so, so they were saying that becoming a doctor makes you fat. Got it. Well, yeah. they were saying that he just not, he's not out here <laughs> running and jumping around as much, so he's not able Fair to... Enough. Fair enough. Yeah, he's fat. But, uh, they're saying fucking fat. It's pretty much exactly what they're saying. But in Super Smash Bros. Melee 4 and, and now in Ultimate, Dr. Mario is different in the fact that his attacks are more powerful. Like, his, the pills that he throw out, like throws out are more, fire, like more powerful than the fireballs. Uh, but he's slower and he's heavier, so he drops faster and he doesn't run as fast or jump as high. Power. Exactly. And now you think Luigi would also be an Echo Fighter, which he was technically in, like, uh, in... The first Smash Brothers. The first Smash Brothers, like, and Melee to an extent. Brawl is whenever he got his own deal and own, like, real moveset. Uh, well, Melee actually technically was, because that's whenever he got the Luigi missile and stuff like that. But the thing is that's different about Luigi is Mario, whenever you do his up B, which is like this type of attack that tries to get you some extra air, Mario will go into a diagonal line to try to reach, like, ledges like that. Luigi will just go straight up. Oh, okay. Not to mention but Luigi also lighter. has the side missile move. Yeah, he has this Mario missile move that, like, he'll charge it up and then shoot out like a missile to, like, one side. And it can, like... Gain him some extra like air, like leverage. So you could either use it as a damaging ability or like from. Oh, you can definitely use it as a damaging okay. ability. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you see, the thing is about like that is that uh, four and uh, ultimate have a ton of echo fighters. You got Pit, you got Dark Pit, you got fucking Marth, you got Lucina, which. Everybody's saying is different, but don't lie to yourselves. Stank Tank said Mario is basic. Damn right he is, but that's why he's like the whole like all round character to be able to get you like into playing Smash. Mario in Smash is like Soldier 76 of Overwatch. He's like he's like he's like one of the best characters if you want to get like the basics of the game. The only reason I play that's, Mario that's I'm so much him. in Smash is just because I fucking love Mario. And I play Link and everything yeah, to an extent as makes well. Sense. But uh And like, you got your Echo Fighters, which literally in 4 seemed like they did nothing different. Like, Falco had the exact same move set, Smash, it's like, Fox. He didn't really do anything different. But they're changing it up now, like they changed it up in 4, but now they're changing it up even more and kind of giving everybody their own identity. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. And they're making everyone's Final Smash a lot quicker. Final smashes now are not going to be like, oh, you know, you press a button and then like, oh, you might hit him. Hey, you got a little mini game to play while you try to hit him. 
Final Smash is now are going to be straight forward to the point. They're, if you hit them, they're going to be fucking pretty much sent off the stage, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Now, a few characters still go against that rule, like Pac-Man. His will be like kind of like... It's like this thing, kind of like a weird thing of like Pac-Man and Space Invaders, where like Pac-Man will turn giant and like start eating across the screen, and then like you'll go off one side and then it'll come in from the other side, you know? They're not Space Invaders. Uh, that's that's fucking, interesting. What is it? Uh... Asteroids. Uh, also, he just like comes from all directions, kind of. I have a shotgun with yeah, ten from bullets in the chamber. I cannot wait to see them in action. And like, Wario's final smash used to be that he turned into Wario, hey, Zach, man, a, which you're one of yeah, those. I'm in a wasp, man. But uh, I have a I have a scatter shot with ten in the chamber. Nice. Wario's final smash. Used I'm gonna to see be what the boss is. I'll man. get my wasp with you. And uh, okay, cool. I'm not trying to dismiss what you said. I was just like, I'm trying to focus on also what I'm saying because I'm also not, like, losing my train of thought with it. <laughs> oh, you're Fuck. No, Wario Man. Yeah, that's Sorry. right. Waluigi needs to be in Smash. Uh, Stank Tank, you know what? I'll agree with you just for the simple fact that if it gets everybody off of Masahiro Sakurai's back for it. It, it tasted weird, but like. But uh. I feel like. I mean, he'd be a good fighter if they could work it in. I, I feel like he should be in the game, but only if, you know, the majority of the fans weren't, like, the way they are now. Yeah. Well, like, I, think, I mean, most I think fans you should say make a, a poll saying, do you want to be in Smash? And if they say yes, then he's like, god damn it, then puts him in Smash. Well, technically his model is already in Smash. He's an assist trophy, so all they'd have to do is up it a little bit, tweak it a little bit, and then, boom, first DLC character Give with minimal move, work. So they can just make a tall, lanky Wario, like that's pretty much it. They could be a perfect Echo Fighter to Wario. Well, uh, they just can't put him on there because he's too big for the screen. You know, like they tried to give the excuse for Ridley, but hey, guess who's in Smash Ultimate? But you know they were working on Smash Ultimate by the time that people were requesting for Ridley. Oh yeah. Man, they got games started before other games come out. They'll literally have like Smash 4 done and they'll like be like, all right, back to work, everybody. And that's seriously almost how it goes. They had this. That's in how game developers works. make a lot of money. Exactly. I mean, Todd Howard said that they'd stop selling uh, Skyrim, importing Skyrim to other systems if people, people stop buying, buying it. it. Literally, if yeah. people he's would like, stop buying it, it, he's like, so "All right, good. I mean, we'll stop." And he like I mean, didn't even say it in a disgraceful so way. Good. He's like. <laughs> I don't know why they're putting Skyrim on the Switch. This is stupid bullshit. And here you are, the one paying for it with money. <laughs> I mean, I bought like, it. Like, I don't complain lot. about Skyrim it. being on multi platforms. I've bought it like four times. Man, I've bought Ocarina of Time three oh, times. Fuck Christ. And I will do it a fourth time. <laughs> if it comes out, like, I thought about buying it on my Wii U not too long ago. What, Skyrim? No, fucking Ocarina of Time. It's come out on so many things, but I've like, bought them on, on almost everything. <laughs> It would look like a potato when you know it. Don't even. <laughs> Dude, Zach, over here like, on me. It doesn't look that bad on the Switch. No, I mean, it's got the same like, exact graphic some, capabilities. Like, it has some, like, uh, what is it called? Like, anti-aliasing, where you can see, like, the pixels on, like, yeah. the edges. You, you can see it if you look handle, really too. closely. Yeah, like, if you look closely at it, you can kind of see it. But, like, if you're, if you're not, like, The Switch is literally just a screen, tiny... But, tiny bit less powerful than the Xbox One and PS4. The thing is, though, is the stuff yeah. that it can do makes it more powerful equipment. Like, the fucking... The, uh, the vibration system in those Joy-Cons are the fucking... are top-notch. Have you seen the oh, bullshit yeah. D-pad controller they have? No, I have yeah, not, right. but it doesn't sound too appealing. It's fucking bad. It's, it's, it's awful. It drains your Switch's battery, like, really quick. Even the really fucking really quick. quick, and you can't use it unless you're only you can only use it in handheld. The fuck? And it's oh, just shit. a D-pad, only D-pad. That's no, it's it's still got the like left Joy-Con, but it's specifically a, like a D-pad only. Like it's got a D-pad instead of the four directional buttons on the left yeah. stick. Yeah. Stank Tank it's said, "I love so my Switch." Bad. Hey, that's awesome, man. Glad you're enjoying your Switch. The Switch is an amazing system. And I feel like a lot of people will be able to do a lot more with it as long as people just get off its fucking back. Because people try to, like, put it down all the time, and it's, like, bullshit. 
Also, Switch, Switch is amazing. Is better than Wii U. Oh, definitely, man. That oh, Wii God, U it's, fucking... it's 100% fucking better. See, now, what Nintendo needs to do is release Stank Tank. Uh, Mario Maker for the Switch. I is do that... not have a Switch, actually. Hey, what's up? I have uh, the I went... One. See, I've, I've fallen on hard... Like, I'm not trying to get too personal, but I'm just going to give the story about how I did not get a Switch and how I still do not have one. On release night, I had the money to go get a Switch. I uh, went to the Walmart and everything. Was in line for the longest period of time. And you see, seven people were in front of me. Exactly seven people. And there were exactly seven Switches in Zach stock. Above you. And I did not know that until they had already given them all out and then told me after that. So, after that, I wasn't able to find any places to get Switches since they were pretty much like selling like fucking crack to crack addicts and... After that, I mean, they were just hard to find for the longest time until crack I ran out of money. So I and free I do have a job giveaway? now, but I've been bombarded with debts and all sorts of other things. So I still do not have a switch, but uh, I do plan on getting one as soon as possible. Uh, but I have seen, played, and heard better. amazing things about the switch. So I have every Nintendo system in existence up to this point, except for the Virtual Boy, but that's just because I don't want to spend so much fucking money on a rare piece of equipment that only has like three games on it. Maybe one day during my fucking game collecting life cycle, but not today. Life cycle? Wait, you just... Wait. I'm I have multiple life now. cycles. <laughs> you're just like you're just a caterpillar that turns yeah, into a butterfly. Man. I think these are gonna be back the... into a caterpillar. I think this is gonna be the <laughs> giant grunt. Oh they, God, no, not Prip yet. It might be him. Either that or like a Prip. tank. Prip. Like, yep. Yep. Ah, yeah. fucking pip app. Pip app. But uh, pip -app. no, pip -app. I do not have a switch. Boot. Be careful, but I want to get one. Needler. Anyways, the fucking switch is an amazing system. Has a lot of good potential, and most likely, did you hear like uh, about how Netherrealm was like, yeah, man, we could totally port Smash, uh, or not Smash, we could totally port Mortal Kombat 10 over to Switch. I mean, remember when they put Mortal Kombat 9 on the PS Vita? You know, PS Vita the worst handheld ever. The first time I ever saw that, I was actually really impressed. But the thing is about the Vita is that it was it's, god off. It's impressive. Well, because, like, PlayStation was really abandoned it after, like, what, a month after coming out? About, a, like, so, a few like, months, yeah. And then developers didn't want to develop for it because they abandoned it themselves. Nobody was buying them. This Dude, Joker I remember Mortal Kombat right Unchained on the original PSP. That was, that was off the hook. Oh, yeah. Dude, remember uh, Woo, how in won. Shaolin Monk you could put in codes to play as people other oh, than yeah, Zach, uh, Kung Lao and, and Liu Kang? Uh, you could play as Sub-Zero and Scorpion and think that was about it. Fuck yeah, man, I was number one? Yeah. Shit! No, well, I know, no, um... I it shows you, you it doesn't show me. What the fuck? Stank Tank said you if, need If you had a game me, shark, you could play as I know. you could play as a uh, other people. Like you could play as Johnny Cage and Jax. Oh, that's um, because in the uh that's because in the multiplayer like against other players like if you got your like if in the local multiplayer of that game you were able to play as them, yeah. No, but well, I mean, like if you had a game shark, you can play as them in single player, like just mm. in like the co-op, not the Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Dude, the fucking multiplayer of course, in that game. Dude, I game have Shallow Monks. We need to play it when you come over one day. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sank Tank said I it's play Mario Kart a lot. You're in good company. Ugh. Dude, I remember when everybody had Mario Kart DS. I fucking oh, miss those days, man. Kart everybody DS. bring their DS to school. Best. Fucking well, remember play Mario because Kart? they sold Mario Kart DS with every single DS that they sold. Because it was fucking <laughs> awesome, and they deserved to be given that game as such graceful gift from Nintendo. That's, that that is true, but I ended up having like four Mario Kart DS games, so I was like, I'm just gonna hook, I'm just gonna keep them. Do you still them. have them? I believe so. Well, I think I think I lost one, so that means I have three. I just have Why to do find you have them. three Mario Kart DS games? I have only one. Give one to me. Because uh, I got one. I bought. I got one when I bought my Nintendo DS Lite. It was black with the red top lid part. I remember that and one. And then my brother, he had a full black one, and Mario Kart DS came with his. Game froze again. And then cool. I bought. And then I brought. And then I bought the Mario 25th Anniversary Edition. Yeah, which had DSiXL, and it came with. You that. can you can play a match, Zach. I'm just gonna sit here for a second. 
All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get you guys into another match. That way we can... Gear of Wars. Ah, fucking nod, nod. Uh, I have the... I had the original three... Like, I had the original regular blue DS. First ever DS I got. Um, DS Lite was uh, the Mario edition. It was just all red, like, completely red with an M, like, the Mario symbol on it, like, the M... Um, oh yeah, I remember that one. That wasn't nice. Which, I still have it. It still works and everything. It's just broken. You gotta hold the top screen up and the right trigger doesn't work, but sure. Oh, wait, is it, is it like the thing where the top thing The top is hinge like is broke. Floppy? Like, the hinge, yeah, and it broke like that, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gonna play yeah, Devil May Cry because is. I'm gonna try to power through Devil like May Cry that. 3. Zach, I beat Devil May Cry 1 and 2. I just, just gotta That's get awesome, through 3. This game is so... Fucking hard. The oh, DS Lite Zach. had the black one. What's up? Or DS I don't I, know I mean. if you saw it, but <sighs> guess who they're bringing back for Soul Calibur 6? Ah, oh, shit. Who are they bringing back? The best girl in the world, Tollum. Oh, fuck yeah. You Wait, know the that one work who with brought back Al Ghul's son in Soul Calibur 4? Wait, if they're going back before Soul Calibur 1, how does that work with the timeline? I don't know. This was, this was oh there. shit! Stank Tank said, "I want the GameCube on the Switch. Like, do you want you want GameCube games on the Switch? That's what a lot of people are saying because they definitely could Dude, do that'd it. Be cool, but they're just. I mean, they not did it to. with GameCube games on the Wii. Did they not? They, no, they didn't have. Well, no, no, you were able to play GameCube games on the Wii, but I think he's talking about Virtual Console. If you could play GameCube games on oh, disc through the Switch, yeah. that'd be awesome. But be I don't. Well, you know they have Switch the, has um, disc disc drives." <laughs> You know they have the, yeah. uh, <laughs> what is it, the, it's like, you can buy a GameCube controller specifically for your, um, Nintendo Switch, for your, yeah, for your Switch. Well, I think it's my with Wii U, I think another GameCube game is, a GameCube controller is coming out for the Switch, though, for this new Smash. Yeah. All right, so just another heads up. Just oh, a he not, not another. It's the first heads up. Uh, just a heads up. We are now an hour and about ten minutes into the stream. So yay us. Ah, uh, we can keep going. It's cool. Well, I know. I was just letting Whatever. everyone know. You have to let uh, me know. I am. I am the god that knows everything. Except that um, everything is also nothing. After this game that I play on this, real quick, I will go walk my dog because she needs to be walked. I will not take no for an answer then, because she's been waiting this long. Then, then we can talk about Soul Calibur 6 and how little I know about it because I and how little I know about it because I I don't know much about the Soul Calibur series in general to be honest. I know bits and pieces. What the hell? I know a lot about the characters from like fighting style from four, less kind of less so about five. Because on five, I mainly just played two characters. Kind of sad to say that. There are some great characters. There were. Except Dom Pierre. We don't speak with Dom Pierre. Fucking fuck he Dom can, Pierre. He can, he can die in a hole. I don't care. I did get him. Why are you grabbing the ball? Teammates have the ball. The ball. The ball. The ball. Anyways, uh, guys, the ball. Fighting get no, you're fine. <laughs> Fighting games, uh. The ball. I feel like they've still got some kick left in them. We just gotta see where they get taken and stuff because, in all honesty, you can only make like Mortal Kombat like so many times before eventually everybody's like, ah, yay, I guess. You can only make Mortal Kombat so many times with the cast we have now. Well, like, I feel and like there's gonna here's come the problem point with when them. You just, when you just straight up have a brand new cast. Okay, so you gotta try to trickle the new cast in slowly, which they kinda did well with Mortal Kombat X. The only problem with the new cast of Mortal Kombat X is the fact that they were just not interesting. You have Cassie <laughs> Cage! Oh shit, younger Sonya. You got Kung Jin! Ah, guy with a bow. Oh, you got fucking... So? And like, you know. Why did I think it was Sona Blade? I don't... First split second, I thought it was Sona Blade. Yeah, I was like, that's not right. You have and you got fucking... Literally, fucking, uh... What's his name? Guy with the uh, like uh, whips and stuff. Takeda. Takeda, yeah. You literally have him, and then like you got the you got the fucking people in the game. 
acknowledging the fact that he's similar to uh. Scorpion. And he's just like, you're just trying to be Scorpion. And he's like, yeah, but I'm, he said I'm not or something like that. I don't fucking well, well, I mean, you have to think about this, though. He was trained by... He was trained Hanzo. in the Shiro Ryu, awesome. which yeah. is pretty much just Which Scorpion, is why he so has, like, a similar, You like, can't blame deal. him. No, you can't blame him necessarily. It's kind of like but... how it's kind of like how Jackie has the gauntlets like Jack. Yeah, but like that's the other problem. Stop making them all like you know, oh sons and like daughters of this, the all the cast. Because first of all, that is cool, but I mean, remember whenever like Mortal Kombat first ever came out and it was just these fucking world warriors coming from all around the globe just to meet up and be like, ah, fuck you, I want to win. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, though, is, like, you kind of can't do that at this point. Because if you, if you introduce somebody without them having any relation to someone, people are going to be like, why is he here? Oh, he's a member of the Mortal Kombat tournament? But still, like, can I have an explanation here? Like, well, nobody how does he fit into this? Whenever, um... Sorry. Nobody questioned whenever people like Havoc in the original games joined them. Like, not in the original games, necessarily, but, like, Deadly Alliance and stuff. The only yeah, time people point. question that, necessarily, is whenever Mortal Kombat 4 tried to do the exact same thing that Ten did, whenever they literally got rid of almost half the fucking cast of characters we all knew and loved and tried to put in people like Kai and fucking, uh... Oh, like, what was freaking, what, still kind Derek of or something did? like that. Yeah. And, like, people, of course, were gonna look at it and be like... Because then people hardly ever even had a fucking explanation why they're there. It was more just like, oh, new characters to play as, new moves, yay! Yeah. And Pretty it's just like, now. fucking, okay, well, where's Scorpion? Not really Scorpion, uh, Scorpion was in 4. No, like, I meant, like, Scorpion wasn't in 3! I remember that, like, in the original version of 3, Scorpion wasn't in it. Wasn't the whole deal, like, didn't he get the name Scorpion? Like, because of, like, how his back fist was up like a scorpion's tail. Like, I remember seeing something about that. I don't remember. Like, like his silhouette looked like a scorpion, so the developers called him Scorpion. I don't know, that may just be me, like, like yeah. mushing stuff together. I, I can't remember, memory, honestly. But... I'm just gonna be completely honest about it. I have no idea. You have the ball. All I know is that, uh... I do not know. In Mortal Kombat 3, Scorpion was gone. He wasn't even in the original Mortal Kombat 3. You had to get Mortal Kombat 3, all, like, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 to be, even be able to play as him. That's odd. It's because they tried to introduce a whole new squad of characters. You had fucking, um... Who was it? You had, uh... Drawing a name, like a blank on his name now. Well, you had fucking Striker. So... Whoop de doo! Oh, uh, I don't know who anybody would want to fucking trade Scorpion for a sniper. Or a sniper to fucking with that fucking fa fuck face. I can't fucking say his name right. <laughs> Strike. I mean that's pretty close to him. That's pretty close to what everybody else calls him. So I mean um, I can't get mad. <laughs> and it's like uh, you got him, Cabal. He but here's the thing. Here's the cool thing about the characters. Like, I, they were I, good. I kind of they like, were. I kind of like Cabal though. Takeda, so, that is Cassie black, Cage. Boys. Jackie Briggs, all those, they're they're cool in concept, but when you try to stuff too much into them, like, oh, there's, they're, they're, like, I don't know, like, Mortal Kombat just doesn't mold well with the story in general, if you think about it, because, like, trying to stuff too much into them, it's just kind of like, okay, we get it, you know, she's her daughter, and then, like, oh, okay, we get it, Jackie's, like, Jax's daughter, like, I mean, and it's cool that they gave like, a little clever yeah, nods, like, yeah, I kind of see like, what you mean, because, like, didn't, wasn't there, like, a constant, like, bringing up of Donny Cage being like, you don't spend enough time with me and Cassie. Like, I fucking despise the fact that Mortal Kombat X's story revolved around Johnny Cage to begin with, in all honesty. I yeah, never like, found I Johnny to be an interesting how, okay, character past fucking, like, how in the world I don't know, one? Cage live in a fight between Sub-Zero and Scorpion? Like, both when of them beating him up. he's supposed to be like, a regular human. Yeah. That's well, seriously it. He's just supposed he to be immortal. Like, green power to you, or whatever it's called. Well, I mean, he's got powers, but he's supposed to be mortal. Yeah, so it's kind of odd. I don't know, but whenever they tried to fake that death, or whatever, they're like, oh my god, this is the sad moment where Johnny Cage is about to die. Oh, I was literally sitting there doing like, please, please, just die, just die, just kill him. <laughs> I'm serious. It was not even. I'm not even joking. I was like, just, well, just now, fucking kill him off. I was getting tired of his one-liners. 
the one thing that got the one thing that I was not surprised about at all was Devora's like Devora like being with Quan T the entire time. Like that's quite obvious. Like when she betrays Melina, when I saw that I was like, oh, she's gonna do something to Cobra Khan. I just know it. It's 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 just yeah. That's another thing. They had like all sorts of villains trying to play at the same thing whenever they weren't really achieving anything to begin with. Like, well, Mortal Khan's trying to take this to take over the world. Oh, but Shinnok's trying to do the same thing. Oh, but Quan Chi's trying to do the same well, thing. I don't All think Mortal Khan was trying to take over the world. I think he was more trying to, that, just trying to take his rightful place on the throne. Well, yeah, because it's Shao Kahn on that throne before he did. But the thing is about Shinnok... See, the whole reason why the story is the way it is now is because literally Mortal Kombat went back to the fucking drawing board with Mortal Kombat 9. They literally got rid of every single bit of story Mortal Kombat was ever they, known they for just, they and went back to the beginning. Reboot. It was a reboot in Mortal Kombat. That's why it's just called Mortal Kombat. Not 9, not nothing. It's just yeah. Mortal Kombat. Which I think they kind of had to do after you do Armageddon, where you well, basically Armageddon, do a full Ragnarok And it's cool because technically 9 is... Yeah, it's cool because 9 is technically a fucking continuation of the original story. Because Raiden goes back in time to pretty much tell his past self, Look, hey, buddy, I, here's what's going to happen in the future. If all these tournaments keep going on the way they're going on, y you got to let them win. So technically, it is a story of, like, a continuation of the original story, but a reboot at the same time. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting though how like the only thing you I don't constantly like, like it it seems like that yeah. story kind of got drawn on like constantly. It's yeah. like oh is this the end? No. Oh is this the end? No. Oh, I just I'm I hated there. the Great. character changes with like personality and stuff. Liu Kang being a main contender, like Liu Kang was never supposed to be the snarky, edgy fucking jackass. <laughs> He was supposed to be a shallow monk really and was very vigilant game. about what he was like, doing. I personally hated it whenever... Okay, so can we talk about this for a moment? Mm. In Mortal Kombat 9, Sindel is like a god. Like, she straight up murders... She's a really good character, Like, yeah. almost the entire cast. Like, so straight up. No, I mean like, the story, like, story-wise. Oh, like, yeah. She's, like, she straight up just murders half the cast. And the she Night does. Wolf just goes full Hirakiria on her and just freaking kills both of them. So, like, that's interesting. Well, Night Wolf had the same fucking characteristics as his Mortal Kombat 3 self, except maybe just a little bit more, like, stern about things. Thing is, though, well, like, that's mean, what I'm saying. Technically, Zach, you're gonna hate this. Oh, fuck. But in no. my opinion, Night Wolf, yeah. Night Wolf has some of, like, the worst fatalities. He does. Uh, he always did like, three as well. What, no, like, three what game was it where? What what game was it where he just threw an axe in your head and that was a like was that three? Was it two D? Or three D? No, it was three D. It was three D. Mm. There could have been any number Not of exactly those, because he was in like only a few three D games. Cause, cause like he just like it was like an older it was like an older one but like legitly all he did Probably was that he pulled out like he pulled out an axe alliance, and fucked it deception. and it got stuck in your head. Enemy been marked. It, I don't know. It's Deadly Alliance good. is my least favorite Mortal Kombat game. I don't. I'll even play the fucking Game Boy versions of some Mortal Kombat games. Deadly Alliance, honestly, it had like a lot of cool things that were new and stuff to try to like balance the playing field, make it be like, oh fuck yeah, man. It, once again, was another victim of, Hey, remember that whole cast of characters you used to love? Fuck them! Here's more! <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Because you had that one chick uh, that wore, like, the black lipstick and was pretty much like a vampirus or whatever. I can't remember her fucking name. Wait, started with a or something like that. Oh, oh, no, it was S. Yeah, that was who I was not thinking of. Yeah, because I remember when... Dude, when, when Serena sold up in Mortal Kombat 10, I was like... Arena? Yeah. What are you here? What are you doing yeah. here? And it's like they, off, like, dude. That was like, of course it didn't look exactly like it, but it looked like they just ripped her straight from, like, Deadly Alliance, and you were just like, wait. <laughs> but they have, like, the same graphics did. and everything. No, no, dude. When I first saw her, I thought she was one of the vampire chicks from that one Scooby-Doo movie. You know oh, what the fucking, about? uh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> the the sisters. sisters. Yeah. Dude, dude she straight up looked like one of them, dude. That she does. Like, dying, and I was like, dude, but, like, I was like dying laughing, but like I had to be on my A game because you know quick time events were there. So I was yeah. like, oh god. 
Well, you got like fucking uh, like in, in Deadly Alliance, they introduced characters like uh, Feng Mei uh, or Feng Mei. I don't fucking know her name. Uh, what was, Ashra. What was, the name of the one, what was the name of the one Mortal Kombat character that was like that had wings? Was like a demon that had wings? Oh, Naga. Not a demon. No, say, no, like, no, 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 no. Had like oh. wings. Oh fuck! He's the he's the main bad guy of Deception. Like, with a D? you know who I'm talking about, right? It's something like that. But like, I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't mind seeing him now. Cause like, yeah, he's in like the older games, but like, I want to see what they can well, do. Well, there's still a place for him in the timeline now. because it's like all that's gonna exist is still gonna exist from the old timelines. It's just gonna exist in a different way. That's why you still see Selena, and that's why you still see people like that. Are we getting an Immortal Kombat? Oh yeah, they've already confirmed that they're gonna come out with another one. It's just gonna take a while. Yeah. I just the the characterization changes and stuff kind of like put me off because Liu Kang was a little okay. I will give him that. Like he was a little bit snarky, like just a little bit, but wasn't to the point that he was Second a total jackass floor. and fucking like overconfident fool about it. Like, oh, you know what? I can beat you no matter what. I know I fucking can. I'm a Shaolin monk. Like, fuck you. But he was never like that, but he was in the new dead series. And, like, the most recent. He was just completely dead. He died in Mortal Kombat 9. He was Kombat a Revenant, 9. so pretty much. Uh, he's, yeah, he was dead technically in 10. You just got to play as, like, a, like as if you were a live skin version of him in the actual multiplayer. Uh, okay. He died in 9, so, like, and he died in Deadly Alliance. So, How'd he die in 9? Who... Wasn't he, like, killed like, him? Wasn't someone because like... he tried... He tried yeah. to kill Shao Kahn because that was the whole name of the tournament. He tried to kill no Shang Tsung. Well, it was one of the two. I can't fucking remember. He no, Shang no, he Tsung. was going to fight Shao Kahn. Yeah, and Raiden, and Raiden tried to, to tell Shao him, Kahn "No, you Earth can't realm. do that." The whole point of Nine was to pretty much tell everybody, "Look, Shao Kahn has to win." It's a very complicated storyline. Shao Kahn Pretty had much. to win to avoid literally everything that happened in the Mortal Kombat games after that. To avoid Armageddon, which everybody fucking dies. Shao Kahn had to win. Raiden tried to tell Liu Kang, hey, look, buddy, don't go fight Shao Kahn, and if you do, let him win. It's okay, he can win. Just let him win. Liu Kang, of course, and then Liu Kang just did not, with his new personality, like, no. was like, no, I can fight him, I can win, and everything will be fine. That's the name of the tournament. Dude, Tries to go fight uh -huh. Shao Kahn. Raiden takes it a little bit too far when he tried to stop him. Pretty much just fucking electrocutes the fucker until he fries to death. Yeah. Well, like, I will say this, though. Raiden kind of played Liu Kang up for, like, most of that story mode. Yeah, he, he was, was like, like, dude, you Liu can Kang, fight Liu I believe you're the one. Yeah, I you can you fucking fight him. You can fight him. You can fight him, man. I don't go fight him. And then him. when he does, Raiden just, yeah, it's like. That's like whenever one of your, like, one of your, like, it's going to sound weird, but, like, when one of your homies is talking to you up, like, at the fucking lunch table and stuff, he's like, dude, you can totally fight that guy. You can totally fucking fight him. And they're, like, he's working you up and, and stuff. And then you get up to go like, walk nah. towards him. They're like, no, no, hey, hang on. Wait, no, I didn't mean to. It's <laughs> fucking with no, please. no, please don't. <laughs> You'll get beat. <laughs> but now it's like, uh. Oh, yeah, Raiden you. pretty much just goes too far when trying to stop him <laughs> and, like, electrocutes him. And then, oh, I didn't know my own power. And Kung fucking Lao. kills him. Dude. Kung, Kung Lao gets like the worst death in that game because of how stupid it is. This random gets his neck snapped by Shao Kahn. Just done. That's how fucking Johnny Cage died in the movies. Spoilers! Ah, they suck anyways. I mean, the first one's pretty good. Didn't, 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 uh, Katana die from, from like Sindel, like draining her life force? What's your fucking correct on that? <laughs> I don't fucking remember, man. It's been so long since I've seen Mortal Kombat and Mortal I Kombat think it Annihilation. Because I know. Because I know, uh, Sindel killed someone by, like, straight up just, like, pulling their heart out. And I was like, I think Whoa. it was Katana. Oh, it was Jade. It was Jade. He pulled oh, out I Jade's fucking heart forgot Jade was in the game, sucked. or in the movies. Well, I mean, I was talking about Mortal Kombat 9, but I mean. What the oh, Jade absolute is. fucking hell I forgot I Jade was in right Mortal now. Kombat 9. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jade's I, a I find it character. interesting how, like. Well, but the funny thing is, is that that's one of Katana's variations of Ten is basically Jade's moveset. True. Like, par parts of Jade's moveset with Katana's. So, like, it's... Oh, interesting. Bro, have you ever been throughout the extent of Shao Kahn? Like, not Shao Kahn. Fucking wow. Shaolin Monk's story. Have you ever been through the extent of it? You ever played it, like, all I've, the way through? I've, 
I played it all the way through, but it was it's it's been a long while. I would suggest going back and looking up the story and stuff because honestly, it's pretty badass. Not gonna lie, oh, yeah. it's a pretty badass story. But uh, weak at parts, but it's it's good. Well, I think every game kind of has that weak at parts mm. in their story. You know where the story kind of just starts to run dry before something big happens. Yeah. Kind of like Mortal Kombat 9 and 10. Uh, I'm going to take a slight intermission real quick. Uh, I'm just going to leave the game playing. I'm let you guys listen to some nice serene Halo music while these two talk, if they're going to talk. Uh, I'm going to go walk my dog real quick, and I'll be right back. You guys have at I it. hate you, Brandon. You're fucking stupid. I hope Jesus you die. Christ. Thanks, mate. Love you, too. I love you so much, Brandon. Okay. Why don't you fucking block? <laughs> don't you block me? How dare you? Like, I was. Like, I've got this new move that allows me to throw my sword into enemies and it does, like, continuous damage. And one of them was like, I'm gonna block. I was like, And your sword just stops? It's like, oh. Well, because I was like, I have gone. Like, I was shooting at him and he was blocking my uh, bullets, so I fucking threw my sword into his chest. <laughs> like, stop that. Hey. I say, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna get something to drink. Go to the living statue room, go to the second floor. Okay. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Okay. You know what? I have returned. You have returned before. I like playing Tita. No. See what I can do with Tita. Still playing Injustice? Oh uh, yeah. Or like, I haven't played this mind. game in a minute. I'll say if you want to thank my teeks on this game, I mean, you're more than welcome to come on over. There we go. Your lord and savory goodness is back. I'm not your lord. Don't call me that. Hey, how doing? I'm not your lord. <laughs> I am not your father. So, um... Intermission still going, or we no, just, we no, just, man. The intermission's over. Here. Let's talk about what we're talking about. I forgot what we're talking about. What we're talking about? Uh, just shit. I mean, we we're talking about um, Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Mm -hmm. All right. Baseline. So, uh, Animation Deadly Alliance for sucks. Mortal Kombat Ten. Oh yeah, sure. We'll, we'll go on with your topic. Animation. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, all I was going to say was that the animation for Mortal Kombat 10 is not that great. The it's, animation? It's, it's the like, the animations and stuff. Like, have you seen how, like... Like, biggest example. You know Katana's, like, simple punts? Like, this press X? Her body, oh, yeah. her center of gravity is just all wrong. Because, like, her <laughs> shoulder... Because, like, her right shoulder goes to where her left leg is while her legs are still standing still. To the ground, and like her entire left, her entire well, body moves to where like her right shoulder is over her left hip. And I don't know. This isn't a podcast it, it, or discussion about like fucking animations. I, I mean, this is about like how before. uh shit fighting games. Which now it's not even how fighting games are unpopular. It's more of how fighting games are just evolving, and how we should like kind of look it's forward like, to them. It's kind of like it's kind of like how um it's kind of weird how fighting games used to kind of be the big thing back then. Oh yeah, new fighting game came I out, mean, that was like, like the fucking greatest. Like, like, what would you say, like before 2000? I'd say around, yeah, about, about like that. before 2000. That's whenever, mm. like, arcades were still popular and stuff. People went to arcades, kind of played their like, fighting like, games there. Like, a new Street Fighter then was like, headline news. 
for games. Well, that's the thing. Back then, whenever now a fighting game came like, out, you rushed to the arcade because the home versions that came out fucking sucked compared, like in comparison. True. That's a good point. Oh, oh, fuck me! Oh, come on! Well, what the fuck was that? Well, All right. Anyways, game rage aside. Well, I will. I will say. Well, I'll take back what I said. I don't really think fighting games have become like a niche thing. But they're definitely not as like, like they're not at the height of popularity that they used to be. They're definitely, definitely not. not. They're more at that type of thing that like but, people still play it, them. A lot of people still play them. It's just more like, oh, I mean, you, you'll be hard pressed to find like, somebody who's dead up in them like they used to be. Well, well, like it's kind of odd how it's like they're less popular than they used to be, but now there's more diversity in the genre. There was a pretty big diversity back then, too. Because then you had Virtua Fighter, uh, like, I mean, this is whenever it was kind of getting up to the height of popularity, like, before it was over- You had, like, Virtua Fighter, saturated, Tekken, Killer Instinct, Yeah, Mortal the original Kombat. Soul Calibur, which was Soul Edge, uh, you had Dead or Alive came, like, came out, uh, Mortal Kombat, um, there was a, quite a few series going on back then that, like, it's just more it's like kind of, now that the modern well, eras come, you got to find like new ways to make the fighting game like exciting, and that's hard to do for each individual series because once one series is done, it you kind of look over at them and you're like, eh, well, we got to be different than them, or else what are we going to be different? Like you know, what's the point in buying our game if you can just get your, which, their game? Which is kind of like how um, it's kind of like how NetherRealm did different advancements between their two fighting series, like from Mortal Kombat nine to ten. It's like you had a big graphical update between games, oh, but you also had variations. Like the variations course, changed the whole landscape of the thing. Yeah, and like both I could are... be playing Scorpion, and you could be playing Scorpion, but it's two yeah. completely different playstyles. Like you could be All playing right. Ninjutsu, and I play Inferno. Especially, but, like well, we especially play especially with Injustice Two. If they were to have like the same type of deal, like. If they made Mortal Kombat, like, 11, with the customization of Mortal Kombat, or, like, with Injustice 2, oh, like which, the gear? Like, the, the gear, gear, yeah. But they, the also dude, variations of fighting styles? great with the gear. Like, they did fantastic with the gear. Imagine if you could have both, which, first of all, wouldn't be too good. That's where you'd have to have, like, certain tier lists and stuff. That way you didn't get into somebody who was way overpowered compared to you. Well, but, uh, well here's the thing with Injustice 2, is that if you play online... And, like, if you play online, this casual online where it's, like, non-competitive mode, if your character's level 12 and a, your opponent's character level is level 30, that's how it is. But there's, but when you play ranked, it's competitive mode settings. So, your gear stats, like, if your gear has, like, certain abilities where, like, oh, you, you do bonus damage Jeez. to, like, Kryptonians, that's, yeah. that's nullified. Abilities for, from gear is nullified. And both characters' levels are the same. They're set at the same. That makes so, like, sense. It come so at a competitive level, it comes down to how well you can play really? the character. But in casual, it comes down to level, oh, shit. gear, Who got better and gear? skill. <laughs> well, it's not really that, but it's like gear definitely helps. Like it definitely helps. And that's like, what Mortal Kombat kind of goes. But like, but, like for. if you're so, like, if your character on Justice 2 is level 30, and you have an epic, uh, your gear piece that's level 5, victory. you'd be better with a level 30 rare piece than a level 5 epic. Yeah. Because of the stats. Yeah. So, that's a whole thing as well. And that makes but sense, yeah, and if, that would that'd be the same type of deal that Mortal Kombat, Kombat could if, if they did gear of Mortal Kombat, I feel like it would be almost too much to also have variations. Because then it's like, well, would you have different gear for each variation, and how would you, like, uh, organize it for, oh, this gear is for Ninjutsu Scorpion, this well, you gear is for games, Inferno Scorpion. You got games kind of like trying to go out on a limb to give you the most, and, like, stuff their game out with, like, as much shit as they can do. Like, I mean, look at Halo 5, for example. How many weapons, variations, suits of armor, how many, like, do you need before eventually the game becomes overstuffed, and, like, most of it becomes meaningless because there's always something better than the other? Well, here's the thing, though. In my opinion, it doesn't matter how much stuff you have in your game. It depends on how much replayability you have. And that's like, true. Like, NetherRealm did great by having towers for Mortal Kombat and the multiverse for Injustice. Because you can just constantly play then. Like, there's yeah. different worlds constantly going. 
and different towers constantly going. Well, it specifically doesn't hold but, well with the fact because, I mean, like, Halo 5, like, I'm just gonna use the example again. Like you said, no matter how much gear and stuff is in this, like, there's so much fucking gear, so many weapons and, like, vehicles and everything that you can get in this game, but not one time have I looked back on any certain situation and be like, let me try that again, except with this gun instead, just see what happens. Because there's no real replayability in it, it's just more like, oh, I mean, I beat the game, yay. And it's which, just, uh, which is like, that's the thing with, like, Injustice 2. It's like, I could be playing as Batman, but there's, like, epic gear sets, and, like, one epic gear set could do certain things, and another do something completely different. That's why you have five different, Oof. uh, like, attires. Oh, shit. I'll call them that. So, like, you could have five different epic sets that, that you can wear that completely changes your playstyle with that character. So it's yeah. kind of a way of variation, but not really. If that makes sense. Well, you see that fighting games nowadays are trying their hardest to kind of keep in the loop. Um, keep in the loop, brother. Um, <laughs> brother, I require oats. It's just like... I require the loop. They're trying to stay relevant, and they're doing a good job by, like, keeping customization, which is something that almost every game has nowadays, that they're, like, actually got implemented, and, it's like, they're doing well. I mean, to a certain extent, not all game companies have done it, Netherrealm has done it fucking great. Soul Calibur has done it great. Like, you can make your own fucking character in Soul Calibur. Same with, now like, the Now, the Armageddon. one problem with Soul Calibur is 5. Soul Calibur 5, you have to... Leveling up on that game is so absurd. You got your good and you got your and bad. And, like, it takes forever. Like, to unlock every gear piece, I think you have to get to, like, level 300 or 500. And to yeah. do that, you have to have at least, like, a couple, like, a thousand hours in the game. Like, like, just that, constantly playing. Because, like, I've played the game... I have, like, 150 hours in Soul Calibur V. And I'm at... I'm trying to remember. I'm at, like, level, like, 54. Like... To hell with that, man. 150 hours, I'm at level 54. Look, I'm gonna be like, totally honest of... with you and level straight. Like, Soul Calibur is not that type of game for me. I cannot stay on that game for that long before I, I mean, just get I mean, tired. that definitely... I definitely... That definitely makes sense insane. because, like... It's definitely a... Soul Calibur, at least, this is again in my opinion, so if anybody has their own opinion on Soul Calibur, I'd love to hear it. It's definitely one of those games where you have to find, like, a certain character's neutral zone. Like, at what zone can you play, oh, totally. basically, footsies with your opponent and be safe? Like, with Nightmare, you can play, you can play footsies with your opponent from, like, really far away. But with Maxi, you have to get in and get out, like, really quick, or else you get caught. Yeah. So it's like, you have to find your character's neutral zone. But with certain games like Mortal Kombat, there are certain characters that just straight take away the neutral zone. Like Inferno Scorpion. Like, he has the whole thing where you can summon that demon to hit you from behind and knock you forward. And then he can go in on you. Yeah. So it's like... Well, that's why so it's kind of like game some, has their own, like, style of play. You gotta, like, learn to expect different things from different fighting styles. And that's why oh, I couldn't no. get into, like, stuff exactly. like Virtua Fighter, because they're more, like, the kung fu fighters that don't really have any, like, special powers moves or anything like that. It's just more like, hey, beat your opponent in raw skill, which, not necessarily Virtua Fighter. Yeah. I would, like, I'd probably say that that's a little bit different, because I haven't actually played many, virtu like, much Virtual Fighter. Uh, Virtua, not Virtual. Um... But it's like games like Tekken and uh, stuff like that rely more on like the fact that they're martial arts games. Uh, so you gotta like, it, and then like with fighting games, you could even technically count UFC and stuff like that that's coming out nowadays. Which, of course, those games are hitting like a dead end most of the time because honestly, I don't see those games getting which, much publicity. I think, I think, I think they're kind of with UFC though. I think it's going for more like realistic simulation kind of fighting. Yeah. Because, like, let's be honest, Mortal Kombat and Injustice is not exactly realistic. Mortal like, you Kombat can juggle somebody on Mortal realistic. Kombat and Injustice. Like, like, even just the fighting, it's like, you can juggle somebody on there for, like, ages. Exactly. So, it's like, that's, that's totally possible. I can juggle someone like Ferritor with just my fist. One thing I always loved about Soul Calibur is the fact that you have, like, more to worry about than just, like... And, like, I guess even technically the, uh, the, like earlier modern Mortal Kombat games, like, uh, Deception and stuff, is that you had ring outs and stuff, you had that type of shit, to where you, like, you had to watch where oh, you step. Oh, yeah. And you had to, like, be careful, was... and mind that while you fight. 
that's definitely like a big thing on Soul Calibur. Like not Man, every stage had a ring out, but definitely. Out I used to love the ring out stage. Just <laughs> whenever I'd play alone, I would just fucking, I did, I loved it. I loved it so much. And then like another thing that like games. See, here's another thing that games in general are doing, which uh, this is going to be like a, something like kind of way off topic, but games are getting too serious for their own good lately. To, just, just to prefer, like, just to have, um, like, immersion. Like, I mean, you got fucking Mortal Kombat Deception and uh, Armageddon. You smack Havoc uh, off of a huge tower, and you're hearing him fucking scream all the way down, Ah, oh, this is gonna suck! And, like... You don't get that type of shit nowadays. You don't get cool Easter eggs like that much most of the time. I think that I think you do kind of get that, but it's mainly in like the intro voice lines between the characters. Yeah, like, and, but uh, then, like when Johnny Cage tells Alien, "You know your head looks like a dildo," and Xenomorph's like, "Thanks." <sighs> Thank you. Well, that means a lot to me. <laughs> Thank you for your input about my head. Thank you for your input. I will now suck your head. Sucks head. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks head. <laughs> Sucks head. <laughs> okay. Like, little like asterisks. Suck. Sucks head. Sucks eggs. <laughs> Sucks the egg, most brother. likely to suck egg. I just fighting games are hitting that type of market now. Like it's just they they still like got their like market that people love to play them. I still love to play them. I'll keep playing them. But I feel like they're falling out of popularity slowly but surely. Eventually, it's like, it's, it, but gaming is just like that. Gaming's like, oh shit, you know, the shooter's genre it's all is gonna of, fall. It's, it's kind of oh like, shit, it's back up. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like stocks. It's like, one exactly. stock will rise while the other one falls. It's kind of like right now, we have, you know, MOBAs like Dota 2 and League of well, Legends you're not even hearing dropping about from the them top anymore. spots on Twitch. And like, shooters well, are I mean, taking over right like, now. Going off of Twitch. It's battle like, Royale. Well, it's, not even suited, you know? it's mainly just battle royale games, which is kind of insane because it's like, remember when you saw almost nothing but different battle royale games every like other day? Now it's just kind of Fortnite and PUBG have basically just killed off every other for battle royale game. Because they were the first two, whether, and PUBG is not necessarily like doing well against Fortnite right now as much as it like regrets me to exciting. be informed. But I understand what you're saying, like, you used to, like, see, oh, you know, Realm Royale, like, fucking Battlestar Galactic Royale, you know, I'm not... I mean, Realm Royale is the whole thing, and it's an alpha. It's an alpha. Thing is, though, is the Battle like, Royale yeah, genre is gonna lose its head before it even gets off the ground, and it's not gonna, like, be a total flop. I mean, People are gonna buy I mean, it. I would say it's very well off it. Wait, do you mean Battle Royale or the game Realm Royale? Battle Royale, like Battle Royale genre, like itself, is gonna fall out of popularity I, faster than that game can get dude, off the ground. I, it's off the ground, and if people are playing it, but before it can yeah. get a full release, it's gonna be like, oh, you know, Battle Royale games, that's just yesterday. Go, go back to your shooters, everybody, because, but, like, it's which like, is the one thing I kind of hate because High Res is the same screw Paladins and Smite, you know, Smite, the game that made them what they are today, and okay. I was like, yeah, guys, look. Okay. Look, Here's the thing about Royale. gaming. That is aggravating as shit, and why fighting games have fallen out of popularity. And DLC. Everything. Well, first of all, DLC. Sorry. Yeah, I feel like it. But I mean, second is the fact that when we get into a game genre, okay. like battle royale, for existence, we go in hard and do not let up until we have exhausted ourselves and fucking gorged ourselves on battle royale games. You want Battle Royale games? That's all we'll get for an entire year. Better love it, because that's all you're getting, and fucking overstuff yourself on them. And then whenever we're done with them, we're just like, we toss them aside, and we don't want to see any of them for like five years. Yeah, it's, just, it's just how it is, you know? It's odd. Because it's like, people get mad over like certain types of games being released, but then they're the people that stoke the fire of said genre and game. You just, yeah, you just don't see many people asking, though. You don't see many people asking, hey, when's that new fighting game coming out, you know? Well, that's it the crazy is. thing, because you know definitely when Mortal Kombat gets announced, everyone's going to be talking about it, because it's Mortal Kombat. 
Oh, definitely. And like I'm, yeah. But 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 it's like compare that to where to if um. Like let's just say you know they announced Injustice three like six months from now, people are gonna be like, oh man, that's really cool. And you're not gonna hear anything about it for like the next way. few months. But I will say this though, I think what helps NetherRealm Studios a lot is because it's basically just Warner Brothers. So they can have great animation, like great cinematic things there. Oh, yeah. So that gives them a that gives them a great advantage. But it's like other than that, it's like you can have all the cool cinematic things you want to advertise your game, but if your gameplay's bad or your characters are really unbalanced in yeah. one way or the other, it's kind of like, oh, great. Honestly, just getting down to the meat potato, like meat and potatoes of things, like people just aren't looking for fighting games right now. They're always looking elsewhere. You got your shooters out that everybody's looking forward to. Oh, Call of Duty, you know, Battlefield. And you got your Battle Royale games, which is already on the rise. You well, got I mean, everything like, else well, I mean, but like, fighting that anybody's up for. Well, I mean, like, I'm just going to go out and say, like, we're not, like, the three of us, we're not, like, against that. Like, if, if you don't like fighting games, that's you. That's that's completely fine. I mean, no, I don't. Fucking, I'm not Duty against anybody for their gaming. That's, defi you know, that's definitely fine. It's just, like, I used to be just, that time. we're basically just saying how, like, fighting games seem to be either plateauing a little bit. Well, or, it's like, just nobody's going really down looking slightly. People, whenever, it's like... It's weird because it's like when when they come out, people will be like, "Oh fuck yeah!" I mean, that's pretty cool that there's a fighting game coming out. But nobody's really clamoring for them. They'll be like, "Oh fuck yeah, a new Mortal Kombat game's coming out. I'll pick it up." But it's like if a new Mortal Kombat game didn't come out for years, it's like it feels like nobody would really be asking for one, you know? Yeah. But like that's kind of like the whole thing with how nowadays you have the whole thing of indie games being better than most AAA titles now. Because AAA titles try like, to overcomplicate like, things and try to, like, fucking force well, their well, mouths like, into things. True. Is that a, and so, like, that imagine, style? like, like, compare the first two weeks of, like, the release of Cuphead and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Completely different, like, reactions to each game. One and of them because... is one of the worst mistakes ever because of microtransactions. And the other one was billed as a cartoony Dark Souls and also one of the greatest indie games of all time. Sadly, Cuphead has kind of fallen off, but they're making a Cuphead 2 or are they making a DLC? They're making a DLC. Yeah, it's they're just adding um, more missions and a new character. That's all it is. But, like, it's just crazy how, like, a, like an indie game like Cuphead kind of came out of nowhere and then just took over, like, the gaming scene for, like, a good couple of months, if not longer. It's just like, yeah, but, like, and it's like, and I wish games could still do that. Like, back then, whenever Mortal Kombat was still fresh and still new, first ever game came out on the market, you heard Mortal Kombat, like, you're like, what the fuck is that? I want to try that. And then, like, whenever you had that fresh feeling from Mortal Kombat, the first ever time you played the first ever Halo and stuff, and it's just because, like, that's why indie games are being so popular. They're new ideas. Because it's, trying no, longer, to stretch because it's out. no longer cookie cutter ideas. Yeah, they're trying like to stretch out and trying to like find new ways to make things fun. Whereas most major AAA game companies are Battlefield 73, like 73, fucking Halo 7. You know, all these like fucking games and stuff that are just literally like trying to ride off the success of past games and trying to continue their story, which is understandable. You want a continuation to a story you're invested in, but at the same time... I mean, six Halo games, really? Without even trying to venture out and try to make another game, like another series? Like, you're not even Is, gonna That's try? why Bungie left. Bungie wanted to get out. The Bungie wanted to try to make a new game series. Four, two, and Turned two. into Destiny. Okay. Four it is. Which, honestly, isn't... Yeah, One, mean, Probably should have stuck with four, Halo. But... <laughs> Three, Speaking of two, Destiny, can we talk about that new game is. coming out, Anthem, which looks almost exactly like Destiny? Um, which they're, they're saying is going to be a Destiny killer? Yeah, they're wanting it to kill Destiny. Everyone's wanting it to kill Destiny right now, and I don't fucking blame them. Destiny hit that wall for know. me, where it's like, I played the first one, loved it. Played the second one, loved it, until I literally got about 25% of the way through it, and I was like, okay, I'm tired of this shit. Well, I feel like the whole 
reason behind having a Destiny 2 Ow. is basically just them wanting more money. Like, I may they be wrong They fucked up their that. promise well, for no, the wait. first no, 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 Destiny. They, Destiny. Destiny was supposed to be a 10-year franchise. And they're like, we're gonna make a second one. Because it was supposed to be... Destiny 1 was just going to have DLC come out. That's it. Destiny for 1 was years. just going to have DLC come out, and it was gonna be a 10-year franchise. They fucked up whenever they were like, Destiny 2. They should have done Destiny 1 fucking DLC. Whatever That's the all fuck, it yeah. Been. The Cabal DLC. So I'll say... Just... But, but, you know, if... I feel like if they would have done that, people would have just called it a triple A Warframe. Because that's basically what it would have been. It's just one game, but it's just a bunch of They would have sold fucking millions. That is true. Well, I think they also messed up because, like, the prices for the DLC was kind of insane when they first came out. Forsaken like, on Destiny 2 geez. is gonna be 40 fucking dollars. What exactly. It, is, it seems It seems like their DLC is like. Anyway. Instead of buying the DLC, Fuck. here's here's a little here's a little memo. Instead of buying the Forsaken DLC, one people four, listening to this podcast, I'm talking three, to you on this. Two. Instead of buying Forsaken DLC, go out and buy Mortal Kombat XL, four, 19.99 right now. One it's a great fighting four, game, and if you don't three, like it, it's only 19.99 two, instead of a whole it's forty dollar DLC. See, here's the that thing you about may that. Not like. Just the way it came. Is the thing I don't like about gaming DLC. I can spend this forty dollars on a game, which most people Zach, will two, do three, because they absolutely love it. Uh, four. That most people will do. Did four. Uh, fuck, sorry, uh, two or what, three. What, two. <laughs> like in <Okay>. the. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, fuck, I'm in the third room. One, four, three, or don't two. Don't make me choose again. Uh, uh, three. Should we do three? three sure. we did... Yeah, go three. Oh my god. I'm gonna fight some enemies. I'm gonna be fucking mad. Oh, oh it was right! Yeah, yeah. not. Anyways. Freaking... The code is not even in the in the podcast anymore. He's just on his own. Fuck. Four, it's three, two, or one. Four, three, two, or one. 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 Well, I don't know. One? Okay. Uh, one's where I came from, though. Well, fuck. I don't know. Four. Four. Okay, four. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Oh. Anyways, you were I don't even remember what DLC. I was saying. Ah, DLC. DLC. I can spend this forty dollars on a continuation Wait. of a game, which started what? out feeling half empty to begin with. It's not fair. And devoid of content, they're gonna make me pay forty dollars. Whenever I can take this forty dollars and use it to go fund a new game, a completely brand new experience. For my enjoyment, by a developer that's actually wanting to try to get out there and try to turn things around with a new game series. My like this, it's my whole deal of like, is this is just like, nobody's willing to try to get creative anymore. They look back at their past stories and stuff, and they're just like, oh, we can continue that, or they try to look back at past stories and stuff from older games, like way older games, and be like, ah, oh, we can reboot that. Try well, well, think something about it though. Different. A lot of indie games like that, they just go under the radar. Like, Moon Hunters. Great game. No one talks about it. It's, a, it's an amazing ah, game. Fuck off. It's a beautiful game. That, like, like, that fucking sickness Like, no that one talks about it. Nobody ever wants to talk about anything unless it's AAA. Us, have, as gamers, have gotten spoiled to, the, like, the fact. We don't want anything but new sequels to the games we've already known and loved and played for, since we were kids. Why could I play the- why do I have to spend money on this stupid indie game and try to fucking give them a chance whenever I could buy the new fucking Halo game and continue the story, man? You know? Well, like- I mean- well, it's like, I mean, you grew I mean, up like, playing Halo, you didn't grow up playing that indie game, so you're gonna want to continue playing that Halo game. You can still buy thing, that indie game. You do it regardless of if the past experience was bad or not. Halo 5 has me questioning if they're gonna do good on Halo 6. And I'm gonna question it. Hell and stuff, yeah, they're and like, gonna do good on Halo Six. Actually, uh, let me take that back. I don't. We said like hell that yeah, they're, they're gonna do Halo to Five. Original. Why don't you like it? I don't, because like they've already changed his armor so much. It's just gonna be stupid that they're gonna go back to the original. They'll have some kind of story explanation for it. If not, then it's just gonna Nanobites, be like, yeah, it will be a little bit weird. Just probably that he found another old it's suit of armor because. All over again. His visor in this trailer is not cracked, so he probably just found an old suit of Spartan 2 armor. They had that, like, a lot. 
Okay, these enemies can't be stunned. Stun locked. I don't know All what right. they're gonna do. All I know is like, what? it's no different from whenever they changed it from three to four. I was pretty pissed when they did that. Like, sure, new art style, it's pretty cool. I mean, damn, you made these look fucking... But I was still questioning from the minute I even started up Halo 4, like, what the fuck did they do to his armor? Five I'm glad they're going back. It's honestly just how it should have been to begin with. Because it's supposed to be the same armor as in Halo 3, except they were just like, the only explanation they had was, uh, we wanted to change the art style. Oh, Cortana fucked around with nanobots and changed his armor. That's how it worked. Yay. And there's, there's, there was but never like, anything. I can see how it's like, you know, they changed his armor set in Halo 4 to make it look better because they're like, okay, we have a new engine now. We're going to test out our new engine and make his armor set look really nice. But not completely different. <laughs> there are hardly any similarities comparing 3 to 4's armor God set. God damn it. And when you try to use the explanation of nanobots to try to fucking say, oh, hey, we that's how his armor changed. That's great and all, except for the fact that literally in nowhere in the series history has there ever been any mark that an AI used nanobots to change a Spartan's armor. Or any armor I mean, ever for to like to that extent. I mean, remember when Star Wars used Michaelorians as an explanation? That and I'm not saying like either, anything so. bad about the armor. I love the way his armor looks in four. It's pretty cool. It's just like if they can do it from three to four, they can do it from five to six. I'm just saying that because, honestly, if, anything, like, if they don't even give like, an explanation, I'll give my own and just say, like, oh, oh, he found an older upgrade. suit of armor. Let's upgrade so much, and then we're going to downgrade. Because people hated the, as much as you like, probably liked it, people absolutely fucking despised the art style of four and five. But not the majority. No, the majority. It wasn't the majority that hated four and five. They hate the art style. Five, not the majority that hated Five's art style. Like a lot of people really did like Chief's armor set. They never, not just Chief's art, like art, like armor set in general. Just the entire art style, like the way environments look. And like, if you're gonna and change the way honestly, fuck, I died. Oh, go ahead, fuck. I'm good. No, I just I died. I I, I don't even remember what I was gonna say. You go ahead. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, and then honestly. Like the whole like oh we don't like we don't like Locke because he's trying to change Chief or he's trying to like take away from the whole Chief aspect like that was only like a little forum that started that spread it into like a bigger thing that it wasn't supposed to be. The majority of fans love Master Chief's armor set. And the majority of fans really did like Spark Lock too. It was just like the, the very small of percentage of hardcore fans that did not like Spartan Lock because they're like oh he's trying to play he's a replace boring... Chief. It's not even, that's not the reason why I don't like him. He's just a boring ass fucking cookie cutter character. I am it's military man boring. going after man. He is boring. It's, he's not boring. He's got a really hey, good story to himself. Oh, well, yeah, but not in five. In five, it's literally just like, the I go only, after Chief. Here's, I am Retriever. He's got a really good story, but the only problem that they fucked up with is that they didn't do it in the game. They are like, oh, we're going to make all of our stuff in the, in the books. So people have to get our book and then learn about the character, or they have to watch the movie and then learn about the character. Locke has a really good character development, and then they add him into five, and because people don't know who he is, they're like, oh, fuck this guy, we don't like him, because he's Which trying to replace Chief. Because when people don't it's try to very read the books and stuff. That's Here's why I'm saying, from a personal perspective, because like I, like, like I said, I've read into it, I've looked into it, this and that. Like, to me, he's a very good you know, he's got a really good character design, he's got really good this and that. He matches all the other characters as well. But, like, the only thing that fucked up is they were like, oh, we're gonna do it in the book. Like, if they would have done all that in the game, like, if they would have made... Hell, even if they would have made a game that was just about Locke... They would have like, got a different actor? It would make so much more sense in Halo Probably 5. But too. the fact that... The fact that they didn't, and they made all of it in, like, the book. They made all of it in the fucking comic. They made all of it in... The, um, the, the movie, like, people were like, no, we don't like that. That's why, to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't see why he's a bad character. I like him, but from your standpoint, I 100% agree with you that he is a really shitty character that they I added into want... the story because they didn't do it properly. They did not me... add him properly into the story. Shit. Fucking hurt my throat. 
For me, the book should be something I read on my own time to try to go further into the lore. I shouldn't have to try to learn the lore from the books. If you're going to make a game, introduce new exactly. characters and whatnot into the game, give me what I need to know in the game, and then try to expand upon that with books. Don't try to give me Kinda what like I need to Dark know Souls. in the books after the game has come out. I am eager to see how well you perform. Like Wait, no, I already have all the gems. No. Spartan Lock to me, is kind of like even in some there. of the books. Yeah, exactly, Brandon. Spartan Lock to me, even I've read two of the books that have like been in the Halo 5 storyline, which to me were un like just unmemorable as fuck because they were just eh. Spartan Lock to me is a boring character just because it's like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, like, he's got a oh, cool like backstory, I guess, but he's bland. He's bland he just doesn't have anything about him that's special. It's like you said, he is bland as a motherfucker. But like, in the movies, in the sh in the books, like, there's actual descriptions of him. There's actual, like, story of him. And that's great and all, but I don't want to have to go back to the books to read them. And then people will, exactly. like, like, well, you that's had to do the same for Master be. Chief. Here's the thing about Master Chief. In the original trilogy, you learn just enough of his backstory from Marines, from, like, just talk that you knew he was a badass that you knew everything that you needed to know about him like you knew a few past stories a few past battles he kind of give you like they gave you hints lock in five play five and name a single fucking moment whenever they're talking about like any past experience of his besides him talking about it himself and making it seem like yeah there was a battle once i was there and that's all he fucking really says that's all it pretty much amounts to and then here's something else that really pisses me off is like, so the book that I'm reading right now, um, you know, this book is called Bad Blood. It's about the, it's like the aftermath somewhat of Halo 5. It's after Genesis, like the planet that they're on at the end of 5, this book takes place after that. Yeah. Because Halo Legends doesn't look like it's going to explain that. So what do you know, there's a book that came out that's going to do it for you, which is stupid. So, in this book, it's literally about Buck talking about his team. Because he's like, you know, we have Tanaka. Tanaka is a very tech-savvy girl. She's fucking smart. She knows what her. she's doing. She's like, he's like, she's really fucking smart. She knows what she's doing. She can figure out alien weapon faster than I can find my keys. And then he's like, and then Vale. Vale's really intelligent. You know, she's really smart. She, she knows Sankhili language, which is like a big fucking deal to the humans because like not many people know Sangheili like you have to have like because Sangheili they you know the elites and all that they talk fucking English because they're like we know English because you know that's the best way to you know that's how we're gonna talk but we have our yeah. own language where we can talk Sangheili to each other where the humans don't know and she's one of them that's like hey I've studied your language I know your language, so like, if you start talking in Sangheili, I can talk to you. So that can possibly help in the future, say like, if like, there is like a Grand Prime Priest, whatever, who only speaks Sangheili, he doesn't speak English, and like, we're trying to make a truce with the Sangheili, she can be like an interpreter, so like, that's the perfect shit for her. And on top of that, with the enemy elite that's, you know, the enemy covenant that's still in Halo 5, like, she can understand what they're talking about on radio waves where they're like, hey, the humans can't hear us because we're speaking in our language. So, like, that's a really smart thing for her to know. And she can read ancient hieroglyphs. And then he was like, you know, and then there's our leader, Locke. You know, he, um, he's like, his, he's so deep into the naval intelligence, Oni, that he's even deeper than my girlfriend, Veronica. Yeah, and it's understandable and stuff, and they got, like, nice explanations and stuff. But, like, I shouldn't have, like, and be obligated to read a book about the character. First of all, them in Halo 5 making it a fucking squad revive game was a fucking mistake to begin with. Enemy you want fucking Gears of War? Go play Gears of War. Halo shouldn't have been like that. Because I'm gonna tell you now, the fucking AI are fucking well, I mean... rock fucking dumb well, i mean wouldn't them doing that in halo 5 be like them going out of i think the i box just figured out a typo in this new? book they are trying something new which is good i'm glad that they were trying something new but it it's like that type of thing that like you for a, like if they would have tested it like as much as they said they the would franchise. it's new, like for, it's the new franchise, for the franchise so of course it's not going to settle well 
But like, it's not like my problem goes like as the the squad revive would be fine if they didn't make it so clunky and weird because whenever you go down, the fucking AI are fucking oblivious and stupid half the time. Like, don't they? Like, don't the enemies just sort of like leave you alone? Like, they'll just walk away from you. I well, had they, veil. They hundred percent misspelled this. I went down. I had Vale running towards me. A box accidentally came in between me and her, and she did nothing but continuously run into the box in my direction, while the other two stood there right beside me and did nothing to help, and then I died. That is what happened. I recorded it. It's probably not there now because it's been way longer than whatever the fucking time limit or whatever is on it. But it's there. Kind of like how in the first Gears of War, Dom is like really stupid. Exactly. And the thing is, like just you tell, like you tell Dom to like attack, he runs right up on the guy with a shotgun. You're like Dom. Don't exactly. Be like this. And the thing is, is Halo. Sure, it's trying something new. But Halo 5 has tried to stuff its mouth with so much new shit, it's like it's not even the same game anymore. You got aim down sights, which I know is not necessarily the biggest change in the world. You got fucking squad revives, you got a squad to begin with in the campaign, you got, um... Which, that's not a first in series, Reach did that first. But, uh... Well, ODST, technically. Yeah. Uh... So much of it's just so new... They just tried to fit it together all at once, and like along with a new art style, along with just everything was so new that whenever you put it all together and then compare it to past Halo games, it's just like, sure, they're similar, but are they really like the same game? Spartan abilities, all that, like it's cool to add all that in, but like maybe feed us into it a little bit. Try to like kind of like slowly give us that info maybe even like make us have a progression system where we gain those abilities over time maybe like make us have our, our, like gain our squad members over time like we get to play a few missions alone first kind of like dragon age in a way yeah, a little bit but like it, of course they can't do that because they've only got so many missions to work with that is true or like, know, it's like i'm like, like start I'm off too like much of a one other person yeah, I'm like, I'm too much of a justifier for the original Halos, I guess, but it's just more like Halo 5 did so much new, and some of it was good. Because I enjoy Halo 5's multiplayer, like, a lot. But... I wish I could message this guy. Like, I really want to message him. I don't, just, I don't like the direction it took. And going back to the art style with it, Halo 6 is not changing everything about the art style. Halo 5's art style will still be present in some ways. But they're going back to a little bit more of a traditional art style because a lot of people hated the Halo 5 art style, regardless. They didn't hate it, they no. just didn't like how it differentiated from the original Halos. So no, we'll see if this... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're doing it or not, but... Remember that, like, the older Halos could seem better because of nostalgia. Like, nostalgia. How do you style. message somebody on Twitter? You, oh, I, to be honest, I don't know. I think and it could, just that's what I was meaning, Brandon. We... <laughs> like, it very much so is, like, done. probably nostalgia goggles. I mean, I've been growing up with Halo my entire life to see it change the way it did. And, but the thing is, like, you're not getting fed into it. It just changes. From Halo 4, yeah, yeah. sure, you get sprinting and then the armor abilities, but you had stuff like that in Reach. Stuff that was already established. You were fed into Halo 4 slowly. You had Reach, like, sprint, and you had armor abilities. Stuff like that. Halo 4 was still Halo. You got Sprint, the armor abilities. Halo 5 was just like, check out all this new fucking movement, all of your new armor sets, all these new guns, all these new fucking, uh, like, attachments, all the... And it's cool, and it's awesome. So much at one point can get a little bit tiring. Especially when it you try like to shove those into a campaign. kind of doing the thing, like, kind of like, I'm gonna bring it back, like, Soul Calibur 5. Like, they just seem to try to want to get, like, a new take on it. Like, a full new take on it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like and it, I don't fault like, Halo like 5 for trying to do something new. But it's like, you gotta kind of lead into it, like you were saying. Instead of you going, gotta like, back up a little like, bit. Like, they just tried too like, much at once. They bit like off swimming. more than they can chew. It's like swimming. It's like, if you want to learn how to swim, you don't go into the 10-foot pool. 
you go to like the two foot pool. Yeah, like you know, pool. you start off in a waiting pool. Halo Combat Evolved, you know, you kind of like you get a little bit deeper with Halo Two, Halo three, Wars, you know, no, and then you kind of like you get deeper and deeper till you're at a comfortable level and you're just at your neck, and then you get out of the pool because you're like, you know, I got that far, you know, and then somebody picks you up and throws you off a goddamn eighty foot bluff into a fucking twenty ass like twenty foot pool. That's what happens. Twenty ass. Yeah. Hey Zach. I mean, I'm pretty sure you would die from what? that, but okay. Maybe you probably so... would. What's up? I, um, you know, I, I messaged this guy because, like, it really bothers me. I just, just want to get this out of the way. I'm going to I'm gonna read it to you. Um, okay. Uh, in the Halo bad, bad Blood. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, right here. This is Buck's narration. The leader of our little team is Jameson Locke, who's even deeper into the Na Office of Naval Intelligence than my lady friend, Veronica Dale. Dale. Dale Gribble. He said, okay, because I messaged him and I was like, I was like, I'm just letting you know. I was like, I was like, hey, sir, hate to bother you. I recently bought your Halo Bad Book or Bad Blood book and I'm really enjoying it. But I found a typo and would like to ask if I'm just delusional. And then I sent it to him and I was like, Veronica Dale, which is in quotations, Veronica Dare. And he's like, it's a typo. It'll be fixed in the next printing. That's awesome. He actually replied. Can we get several like likes from my being, buddy? <laughs> he he replied, but he was like, "This mother, really? <laughs> he's just like, you know, you're gonna enjoy the book. You're just gonna, he's gonna pull, pull yeah, out I was, my I was one typo. Yeah, I was like an asshole, honestly. <laughs> like, fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, he literally just messages you, fuck you, man. <laughs> no, but like, uh, just going back to the whole point of it is like, I'm happy that it's going back to the old art style. I know that the, like, rapid change, the, the whole thing is what I'm saying is, why be mad about sudden change when Halo 5 did it to us all along? Halo 4 did it to us all along. If you're going to get mad at Infinite for suddenly changing it back to the way it was, you got to get mad at 4 and 5 for suddenly changing it to what it is. If they didn't suddenly change well, it to so what it like, is now, with a game you don't like, got to change it back to what it was. Like Halo, you kinda also I'm going to try to butter him up like, so he's not mad story. at me. <laughs> It's like, it's like, if some, if like, if, how do I say this? If a game has like, below average graphics, but the storyline is like, glorious. Gamers. Then people Mind will, another boss people battle. Will, okay, cool. The people I'll will like, stick, please don't be that big slide, you know? Yeah, Brandon, it's like, I'm I not trying not to tell mad them to me, go back man, to like, I original. I said something. <laughs> 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 He's like this fucking kid. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of him. I mean, it's just like I don't fucking know. Like, imagine if Dark Souls. You got Dark Souls. You go to Dark Souls Two. Dark Souls Three changes every fucking thing about the series that you've ever known and loved. The mechanics, the art style, and everything. Of course, you're gonna be you a little like, like whoa, wait, builds? hang on a second, whoa. And then Dark Souls like Four comes out, and then like it goes back to the original, and you're like, oh, okay. All right. Well, you know everybody's on Dark Souls Remastered now, which doesn't look that different from the first one, but whatever. Well, so many games have done what Halo has done right now. They've, like, changed their art style, and then they realized, oh, shit, we fucked up, and then they went back. Bro, well, I mean, Super Smash I, Brothers even I did mean, it. I mean, Gears of War has been with how many companies? He said, artists? thanks, glad you're enjoying it. Like, please be nicer to me. Please be nicer to me. He is nice. That's <laughs> fucking as nice as you're going to get from a busy man Don't like him. Me. He's only he's camping right now. He posted a picture of him camping. He's not busy. And he's probably writing him. new books and being all you like, I'm camping while I'm writing. Well, I just asked him. I was like, hey, you I was like, you know, are you currently writing another Halo book? Or is that like, oh, I just dropped down a hole. Probably shouldn't have done that. I hate myself. But I was like, are you currently, I was like, is there any more Halo books that you're going to be working on? Because I don't know if he's worked on any Halo books before. So, like, I asked him, I was like, are you going to be working on any more Halo books, or, like, you know. He said, "Oh, damn it. He, I said, are you going to be working, or I was like, are you doing any more books for for Halo in the future? Or is it just a classified thing? I'm really excited for the new Halo game, but I've, I've been shown very little of it. And he said, it's if entirely up to 343. Right damn it. He said, it's entirely up to 343, and then a smiley face. <laughs> Don't do this to my heart. Did he work for 343? No, 343 hires authors 
And then, like, they're just like, hey, write Halo book. <laughs> I messaged him back and said, don't do this to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Sends you a free copy oh of every book he's ever written, and he's just like, you're gay. Know, you know, like, hey, Cody, you gotta find his Instagram <laughs> or social media that. to see if he posts That's about what it. I'm messaging him on, is on Instagram. <laughs> it's like, bro, look at this dude, look at this dude, look at his lips. He's done the, oh my god, he did lips. the Marvel Encyclopedia. He's he done Halo that. Legacy of Onyx. He did that in 2017. Wait, Marvel Encyclopedia, like the one Mr. Smith Halo has? Bad Blood. Yes. He has a Facebook. But Brandon. <laughs> yeah, the Facebook. Oh, I did New Blood! Never mind, I can't fucking remember. Did he do New Blood? Yes. If it's I'm a continuation to... of that book, I would assume he did it. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh. Point. unless you get like a fucking original series novels, fucking like Eric Nyland handing over the series to William C. Dietz and he fucking fucks the story. I just, just messaged him. William like, C. Dietz actually did a I was very like, good adapt you're the one who wrote New Blood. Game. And he's going to be like, yes, I know. I wrote New Blood. It was one of my, you know, one of my favorite books. And I'm going to be like, I'm going to kill your family. <laughs> 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 he's like, you message him. Favorite book. But I'm just like, imagine if he's like, uh, oh, that's one of my blah blah blah. I'll be like, I'm gonna fucking kill your family. Cause remember, that's the one that rookie died in. Did you write New Boy Blood? Letters. And he was just like, that was one of my favorite books. I'm, I'm, and then he like leans in close. I'm absolutely in love with the fact that I killed rookie. And you're just like, oh, that <laughs> son of a bitch is fucking dead now. And I'm like, <laughs> they you fucking stop. murdered him. <laughs> <laughs> His brains were splattered on the fucking floor. And I'm just I like, I fucking oh! pictured every little detail, every fucking piece of brain matter coming out of that fucking skull of his. Well, this is an interesting podcast now. Yeah, I don't fucking know what it turned into. Fighting games are I'll popular we'll still. Edit, They're getting we'll there. That's all I gotta out. say. I'll say we'll probably edit out the last, like, what, 30 minutes? I don't know, man. It's pretty entertaining. Brown. We'll probably turn that into their own video, like <laughs> the podcast snippets, like and like podcast like uh, waste basket. That's what we'll call it. The podcast waste Ooh. basket. All no, of the dude, stuff. That needs to, no, dude, that needs to be the name of the podcast. The waste basket. The waste basket, because that's where yeah. people are gonna toss it whenever they hear us talking shit. <laughs> no, I mean we talk about random shit, so it goes in the waste basket. Holy fuck, man. That's actually fucking smart. I'm gonna fucking write that down. You're welcome fuck, to the Fuck, I'll beach. write it down in this one, I guess. Fuck me. Fucking asshole. Like, whenever we found out that Andrew WK was doing music for Raids 2 when Dakota was super excited. I don't remember that. I probably wasn't here. I remember saying it, and it was freaking amazing. Because Andrew WK is a great musician who never had a who uh, totally never had a show on Cartoon Network called Destroy Build Destroy. Initiating Slayer. I am eager to see how well you perform. Oh, uh, initiating Slayer. I'm eager to see how you perform. Ah. <laughs> Oh shit, hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm putting a pencil back, I'm putting a pencil back! Oh lord! Oh lord, things are happening! Alright, we're good. Pencil black. But, no, like, just back to the whole thing, it's just, I'm happy they're changing the art style back, because I love Halo, the original Halo's art styles more than I like 4 and 5. Just with environments and the forerunners and everything, like, I mean, you look at the fucking Prometheans and stuff, that don't look like nothing involved with no fucking forerunners! The concept art that they had for Halo 4 and 5 looked way closer. With the blue and say, everything. When I first saw Prometheans in Halo 4, I was really confused. Because I was like, wait, how are these guys connected? <laughs> Prometheans were built by the Forerunners. Or at least that is what was told. Here's the thing but the Prometheans really don't look like though. anything the Forerunners have ever built in the history of the Halo series. You look at the fucking yeah. locales they built in the original Halo 2 and 3, which all look similar, which they did have changes, but they all look similar. And even 4 to an extent had some of the stuff from like what looked like 3 and 2. 
but you look at the Prometheans, and they don't look like nothing ever fucking designed by the Forerunners. If you go back and look at concept art, however, a lot of the concept arts for them, like the knights and everything, looked exactly like what the Forerunners would design them like, but they just chose to go with a different art direction, I suppose, which... Halo 4 it's and 5 like, are... Well, go ahead. It's kind of like saying the Nords of Skyrim built White Gold Tower. I mean, you exactly. can obviously tell their buildings are completely different. Exactly. Halo 4 and 5 are completely and utterly beautiful games. Do not get me wrong. The graphics are fucking amazing. The, the art style even is amazing. But as for Halo, I just want to see it get back to simpler times and try to keep everything, like, looking the way it's kind of like it was supposed to, I guess. Because I know that 343 wanted to flex their muscles and see what they could do with the series and change up the art style and stuff, see what they, where they could go with it. But they shouldn't have changed it as much as they did. There was, like, there should have been moderation in place. Who knows, maybe in, like... Six, like Chief is wearing his original armor to begin with, or like the Halo 4 and 5 armor, and then like later, like they, I don't know, they just they're gonna give an explanation for it. They're not just gonna like try to pull another fucking Halo 4 on us. And if they do, well then I mean, fucking Halo 4 did it to us, so I guess I, nobody can be mad. The explanation Halo 4 did give us for like Chief changing his armor is just a little off to me. He, like, didn't come out of that cryo chamber the entire time he was there, and you expect me to believe he's completely decked out in a new suit of armor because of nanobites? It's like you could at least X. have made it look... <laughs> you could have at least made it look even more similar to the Halo 3 armor. I know that it was a new engine, and they wanted to try other stuff, you know? It's like, I get that they wanted to change it for the simple sake of, hey, we got a good engine. We got a great artist. I'll say maybe his armor change. started to like break down while in a cryo chamber, or maybe it broke off because it's so cold. I don't. And then Cortana restored it. I don't know. Well, like I, I mean, think I've been a little bit harsh with saying that like his armor doesn't look anything near the original Halos. I mean, it does. It looks similar. It's just weird. Like it, it's just. It, the way it changed is just like, I mean, like, I love the bulkiness of it. I love, like, how it makes, like, Chief look like a fucking total walking tank. Now, that I do like. Which is basically but what he has been, like, throughout the entire three series. Even three made him look like that. Two is weird in the fact that it made him look kind of slim. One, like, had this angular, bulky armor that made him look like a walking tank. Two made him look like he was, like, a slim down super soldier. Three brought back the bulkiness <clears throat> by bulking up the armor from two a little bit more and kind of like padding it up and making it look a little bit more, I don't know, metal and kind of... And then four came in and was like, guess what? Like I said, it don't look bad. I like the art style of four. I just didn't want it to change so drastically to where like it's not even recognizable. And another thing that I, like, Jacob wish it doesn't, like, hope it doesn't change is like, well, Jacob, like, you know... Not my Jacob, but Jacob. I want them to bring back, if they're going to have health, they need to bring back health packs. Like with Re uh, like with Halo 1 and Reach. Because otherwise, having a health bar up at the top of your screen, under your shield, isn't going to mean shit if it just acts like another shield. You might as well have just one great big long health bar. Because I'm not going to, like, there's no point in having two health bars. I get it. Your shield is like, oh, you know, you get your protective surface and then like whenever you get back down to health, like, oh shit, you only get like one or two shots. But I just, I don't know. It does. It feels awkward to me. Halo 1 actually had it to where like you had a shield that recharged back and full health. You get shot a few times with health. You're going to be low on health. You got to watch where you're at. Like it makes you think about what you're doing in the game and like, oh shit, I need to wait for my shields to recharge, run out and grab that med kit. And Reach did the same thing. Are nearing victory. And Halo 5 is just more like, oh shit, my health's low. Oh, I'll recharge just like my shield does. What's the point of having health if it's just going to be another shield? It don't make any sense. If it's just going to be a recharging health regardless, then just don't even make a health bar. Make it like four and make it just a shield bar. And then like once it runs out, one or two hits, you're dead. Because that's the way it did. Like That's the way Halo was ever since 2. But the first ever Halo was praised for the fact that it did health like that. You had a shield and a health bar, and that was like the main gaw of the game. 
That was fucking awesome and people loved it. Two and then up is pretty much like, oh shit, your shield's out, don't get shot. <laughs> So it was Which pretty much like a lot of games have like bar. the whole shield. Like you have your shield and then <laughs> like um okay. like you can take like two to three shots and then you die. You know. Exactly, but it's the thing is, is like technically doesn't that just make it a health bar? It doesn't necessarily make it a shield if it comes back like I mean like a Call of Duty. Because if like if that's the case, then Call of Duty can be acted as if like, oh that's your armor taking all the shots before you, you get down into like the bloody screen. Then one or two shots you're dead. But your shield recharges. It might as well just be a well, fucking I mean, health bar. Well, I mean, you know, in a game like that, it's like, if you didn't have recharging health, and that just makes it way too difficult for most people. Well, Call of Duty didn't used to have recharging health. Call of Duty used to have it to where you fucking went out and found a med kit or you're fucked. Actually, I don't remember that being in Call of Duty 2. Call of Duty it two wasn't in 2. It was in, like, the originals, like the fucking... Zach, Call you planning on buying and... uh, World War 2 eventually? Maybe I'm not sure why. Um, I'm really, really, really enjoying the, like, the zombies for it. I don't know why. Zombies would probably be the only reason I buy it at this point because I've heard multiplayer's cancer with the way shotguns and stuff are used. Uh, but uh, it depends on which which game mode you play. I'm really enjoying. I'm really, really enjoying multiplayer, honestly. And then like supply yeah. drops, like I mean you. You can get those pretty easy, actually, because there's challenges you can do where it's like kill 150 enemies with SMGs within four hours, and you can get you can get a supply drop. That's cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, so I, I'm looking into it. I've been looking into it since release. It's just like, yeah, it's worth it. You know, another game that like, what's up? Oh, I will, I will. Yeah, I'll definitely have to get that set up and stuff. There's two hours of fucking footage to go through with this. Two hours and like 30 minutes. Hours. I'll, I'll say, dude, like, we've been streaming almost since, like, 10, 10 something. Fuck, 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 fuck. Alright. It's like a... I just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm glad Halo's going back to the original art style and stuff. And I know that we jump topics a lot, but like, we kind of wrapped up the fighting discussion like a long while back. I'll say we didn't really that... plan this podcast. We just said, "Hey, let's do a podcast." Yeah, so it's not like we really chose one topic and we're like, Initiating "Stick fight. with it." I we just literally well talked before. about it for like ten seconds. We were like, "Should we do a podcast? Should it be about fighting games?" Yeah, man, let's do it. Uh, and then I started the stream. That's seriously what happened. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. And then exactly. whenever you kind of run out this of isn't... fuel for talking about fighting games, it kind of gets, you know, to the point that you talk about whatever the fuck the topics lead on into. But that's what a podcast should be, and I, I had fun. Pretty much. Okay, unless you unless you have that podcast specifically about that, then oh, probably best to keep it on that. Ah, but as the Game Grumps shown, that that wasn't fucking helping them, now was it? Yeah, but the Game Grumps aren't made to do podcasts. Well, the G-Club certainly didn't last very long, and I'm not made to do podcasts! I'm a fucking streamer with only 30 followers! Dude, I gave we, up on but YouTube mean, but us three, but dude, us three can hold a conversation about the same subject for a pretty long time. Uh, the only way to really become popular on YouTube is you just gotta play whatever, like, the mainstream games are. So if you wanna be popular, fucking Fortnite. Play Fortnite. and be popular. Yeah, but... If you just gotta hump main... on the... Oh, you just gotta jump yeah, on the train, but, that's fucking popular. Yeah, but why do that when, but like, why watch somebody new with few subscribers playing Fortnite when you can just watch Ninja? He's doing probably better than that new person. If, if you jump on just a popular game, just be playing a popular game, it's useless. You gotta find your niche and stick with it. Yep. Missing the other fragments. Ouch. That's what this is going to take me to do. I don't know. I, I look forward to doing more podcasts and stuff in the future. Maybe I like talking about a subject. Well, like, I love having like Zach's brother and, stuff. and <laughs> the other Jacob, and that's it. Because so we tell we calling ourselves the main oh. cast, us three. Is it like we're the main cast and everybody else are guests? 
I mean, I guess. I don't know. I mean, we can change. Welcome to the Waste we Basket this is the pilot episode. Podcast. This is the pilot episode. Of the Waste Basket. <laughs> exactly. That's a really cool name, actually. Well, I mean, we just, like Brandon said, like, I mean, whenever he said it, it kind of, like, stuck with me. Like, we just talk about random shit, so, I mean... It's just a waste basket full of fucking randomness. One minute we're talking about fighting games, and like we did today, we literally went from talking about fighting games to the art direction of fucking Halo. <laughs> exactly. What's we went from shma Smash. Nothing's wrong to with that. That's the fucking cool thing about fighting it. games. Oh, well, no, popularity. I think a podcast. To, to popularity to be of fighting games and then Halo. If you're gonna be like. One of them podcasts that like want to get to the bottom of something, like kind of like a game theory type deal, like where you want to get to the bottom of a subject. Sure, make it about literally only one thing. Hmm. But we weren't trying to solve any major issues or anything with why fighting games aren't popular as much nowadays. We literally just talked about kind of like what we were like. Well, here's what's going on with fighting <laughs> games today. Here's what happened. This is probably why it's not being as popular nowadays. That was it. That's literally all we needed. And then we, we just basically so just put our two another... cents in on a topic. And then I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna try to like do a podcast where we try to find out any deep underlying issues about something unless it's something I'm very passionate about. We're gonna find the deep underlying issues on why Noob Cybot was not a Mortal Kombat 10. I don't know. Because they fucking brought in a new cast of characters and didn't want us to be happy. That's the reason. <laughs> Enemy engaging, blue pen. Honestly, like. If you get me into a subject about the Legend of Zelda, the timeline, stuff like that, I will go on forever. I mean, hey, we Let's may see. have an Elder Scrolls podcast later down the line. That'll work for me. Where Elder Scrolls 6, which has been fucking confirmed, finally, or like will finally 2024. go into effect. <laughs> Skyrim still has yet to come out on the fucking Apple iWatch. You gotta, we, we gotta wait. Dude, like, well, I'll say, like... They're working on Raids 2, Fallout 76, still putting out, like, constant updates for ESO. Bethesda's only Starfield's producing Raids 2, Rage 2 though, isn't it? No, like, Bethesda's, like, the whole shebang with Raids 2. Like, they're doing the you whole sure? thing with it. I thought it sure, was yeah. Rage. I don't know, maybe they bought the rights from one. I don't know. Because I know id was definitely Rage 1. I don't know. I'm going to have to find that out later. But, like, they have Raids 2 that they're going to be dealing with. Like I said, constant updates with ESO. They're going to be working on Fallout 76 for a long time. Starfield's honestly, coming out in, like, 2019 or 2020. And then, to like... Elder Scrolls 6 probably ain't going to be coming out until, like, between 2021 and, like, 2024. In all honesty. I don't think it'll take that long, honestly. It's definitely not going to be 2019, but I see, like, 2020, 20, like, 21 coming. Because they already said that they've got like some pretty good headway with it, but they're not really headway. But you also, but, like, have, to, they... but you also have to think oh, of like how like how many people do you think are going to be working on that while you have all those games that need like bug testing and updates? Because you know what they're the going funny to be on is, point with Fallout 76 updates. They better. I mean, like Fallout like, 76 is well, going to be that Fallout game that they can't fucking can drag be. their feet on. on they got to have constant quality of life. Bethesda MMOs. Well, I'm just saying, like, Fallout 76 is gonna be have to, like, ha gonna have to be that Fallout game where they really focus on. The minute they see a bug, they're gonna have to fix it because bugs in an MMO Dude, game fucking kill it. I wouldn't mind if Elder Scrolls Online was just like Fallout 76 instead of the way it is now, but that's just like me. The whole problem with Elder Scrolls Online is that it was fucking developed by Zenimax, who fucking destroyed that game. It I mean, the gameplay is by fine, but Bethesda. it gets very repetitive after a while. As any like, MOBA, honestly. Four, but, They're not MOBA, well, like, fucking MMO. Well, like, with that, it's worse. Like, you have basically three different types of quests. You go and kill, like, a bandit leader for a bounty. You go get something. Or you do a mix of both. Yeah. Or you make something, sorry, of the four. And people are saying that they're not excited something. about, uh, like... No people, no settlements, or nothing like that. Uh, well, there's gonna be settlements that are already settlements. built out and yeah. stuff. Well, you can make them, and then you can build, like bring people in. The, like, what's kind of flowing in my mind is like, it's gonna be cool to have that kind of Minecraft-esque server that people will be able to visit every now and then. Like, 
Oh shit, there's a settler that lives here. It's another player who will trade guns and stuff to you for caps and stuff. Like, he's your shopkeep. Another player that plays that game is your shopkeep. Because there's gonna be people, like, be people who get into that and will roleplay that way. No fucking doubt But then you have people it. that take, you know, a mercenary game. My question. Seriously. Time remaining. Five minutes. My question to the game is, um... How are they going to handle... How are they going to handle, um, like, uh, my, the real question I'm wondering is how are they going to handle, like, whenever you save and quit? Like, if you make a settlement, what happens whenever you save and quit? You know, it's online, so. Honestly. I feel like well, the way I mean, it's gonna go. Well, I mean, think about it, it's kind of like how, like, for instance, Neverwinter. Like, you can be in a random spot, and it just auto saves as you go along. So, like, if well, you like, save and quit, then your character will spawn there. Next time well, you no, turn I'm on I know what he's like, saying. What happens I know if you what make he's a asking. settlement? If you make a you settlement, make a settlement. you're playing online with other people, what happens whenever you quit? I would say you quit. That Until settlement is but, still in that server, but whenever you respawn in another server, will your settlement be there? Uh, I honestly feel like it's going to be like, your server is going to be centralized around you. Whenever you get offline, your server goes offline. Or at least yeah, your copy like of that server. Too, like, I feel like it, that's like for mainly private servers. But that's like way too complicated. Kinda. Well, Bethesda's got the time and effort to pull it off. The thing is, what I'm thinking is like, you get off, your copy of that server goes offline. Everybody in that server with you is still in that server and in their own version of it. Well, so like maybe to them, like that your settlement in the distance will, will despawn. You have been defeated. Like, I'm, one, or I'm wondering if the settlements aren't like blank areas. Like, what if it's a settlement that you claim and then you can build onto it? Like, it's like a spot of the like game where like you claim it and it's a settlement. But like somebody else can come through and destroy, it and then they claim you're, it. You're from what they said in we the they, you're able to build anywhere, like anywhere. They said oh, that. Oh yeah, uh, true. Yeah, for Once you build that. a settlement, they're gonna make a system where it's like other people can't grief and fucking ruin it. Hmm. I forgot. About that, that system is being that if you get shot and killed, the person that kills you gets caps and like XP and stuff, but you don't but lose if anything. You, if you well, like, if you start, the fun thing that I like about that is that if you start the fight and you get killed, the person that killed you gets extra caps, because it's revenge. It's like, you started it, you got killed. That's your own fault. Yeah. And it's like, there's incentive to keep going back and forth to the person that killed you, because whenever you kill them after they've started it, it's kind of like a, haha, you started it, like, you know, but you get extra caps because you you finished it. Well, like at what point? Oh that my end? god! Like, so what if Why that person that so doesn't hard? play for a whole month and then they come back Why and then you kill so them hard? after they killed you a month ago? And it's like boom. I don't know how that's gonna work. I think it's just gonna work in the same session type deal. Probably. Yeah. I trust in Bethesda, and I feel like they're gonna find a way to make it all work. Like, I never got into settlement building myself, so I feel like I'm gonna be the type to try to raid other people's settlements, kill them, and then just take their shit, like take their settlement. Over for myself. Dude, I'm gonna play that game kind of like conservatively, most likely. I don't know, like, like I'm gonna be the that's person the weird to be like, thing. Hello, I will trade. You feel you like it's items, gonna be a bad thing money. that oh shit, you can't lose anything, so why give a fuck about anything that happens to you? Well, second, I mean, like, that's kind of what makes it fun, but also like, you know, if you don't lose anything, which who knows, maybe get tiring, but because you're not gonna have any like real care for your own safety. If you don't lose anything, what's the point of fucking caring if you just run off into the middle of a settlement scene and if you can kill people? They're gonna find a way to incentivize it, and they're gonna find a way to kind of balance it, and if not, well, I mean, I wonder there is if a way... it would be, like, a fable. You know how if you own a property, you get money over time if somebody lives in it? That'd be cool. See, the well, we know for a fact that whenever we crazy, whenever we get it, we're all gonna have to like build close to each other. If not, building the same settlement. I mean, shit. Make it a mess. I mean, I feel, 
I feel like it'd be interesting if we built like kinda close to each other, but not like so close right that, on like, top of each other. Yeah. Like I oh build a house or a settlement like right up on top of a hill, and then you guys are down slightly lower into the valley or something, and I'm overlooking, and like I'm like the eye in the sky type deal. We're like, oh shit, guys, hey, you got a nuke coming in. Oh I speak for the tr I speak for the trees. Everybody keeps saying nukes are going to be so overpowered, but here's the thing: nukes are also going to be hard as them. absolute fuck to, to get. Perform. Yeah, like one launch you're going to spend like be... a solid like couple of hours to get those. Exactly, and in the trailer, everybody's like, "Put the the, the the launch codes were right beside each other. They did that so they could show us the fucking way it works. They're not going to actually I mean, put launch codes right beside each I mean, other. Do you really think it's going to be that hard for them, Bethesda themselves, to put in a little, oh you know, code? You know how you can put in God mode on Skyrim? Like, exactly. They just put in a little code and be like, boop, oh, oh, oh The way look, I feel like it's right going to be is going to be like, one launch code's right down here in the bottom right corner of the map. Oh shit, the second we need to get is- Oh fuck, way over up in the top left of the map. Yeah. But you don't know where the launch codes are gonna be is the thing. They don't tell you where they're gonna be, you just kinda happen upon them while you're exploring. And I wonder if you keep them, like, over time. If you, like, grab one, I don't doubt that you, like, kinda keep it and whenever you save and quit it's just over. Like, I mean, you keep it. Well, I mean, well, I mean like, I'm wondering if, like, Zach, like, say, like, I've been playing for two hours and you get on. And I have to leave to go somewhere for like 30 minutes. And I know you're going to be on for a couple of hours. What if I gave the nuke code to you and then I come back? Do you still have it? I yeah, like I would. should still have it. I feel like it's a physical item that you pick up. Because I think it's the way, like, that's the way it showed in the trailer. Like, physical yeah. item that you legit pick oh, up. Oh, I like bet it's you a probably can't drop it, piece though. Piece of paper or something. Because it probably count as, like, a quest item. You can't drop I it. I doubt it like... count as a quest item. This game looks like, like it's gonna kind of well, do away with that little deal, like oh, quest item well, or something like that. Well, like, well, like I'm wondering if they're like just not gonna allow you to drop it because, you know, like what if, you know, you just go like you find like almost all the new codes and then you just find a random person and you're like, hey, here's all these new codes, nuke this other person for us. Yeah. Well, people are also kind of thinking that this is gonna be like Fallout. Well, remember, Live. it's only I'm a pretty 12 sure. person. Well, yeah, 12, it's only gonna be like 12 people to 12 in the entire person. map. Yeah. So it's not like you're gonna have to worry if you got four in the game with you. The weird, what I'm thinking is like, everybody's like, oh, this is Fallout 5. Actually, technically, this isn't. This is like the New Vegas to four. This is like gonna be like a side project that they're fucking around with, see what they can do, and have fun with. Except the side project is a massive side project. Except the side project is a big project that's not really a Ex side project. And the side project is more accepted than Fallout 4 at the moment. Exactly. So there's not going to be any big story. You literally exit the vault. You are the world now. Go build. Go, like, replenish. Go do things. And since there's I no get big the story of Centennial Edition, I'm going to be looking uh, American as possible. Honestly, I'm kind of glad that there's no big story because I'm, I was getting tired of Sean! 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 <laughs> it's like I was playing Heavy Rain, but Bethesda's version. Exactly. Technically, if you think about Sean. it, Fallout 3 didn't do much better in that regard. Fallout 3 was literally Dad! 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 And then, and then New Vegas was like, I'm a courier. Have you seen I'm going to find the guy that fucking tried face? to kill me. I'm a courier. Have I like you seen the guy that shot me in the fucking face? <laughs> I don't like news whatever. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't... I'm glad that it's not like this big overarching storyline for once and that it's just kind of like it gives you the freedom of, hey, you just exited the vault. Alright, now go. But don't I have this big story to fill? No, you just, the grass you just go. Is green. I, I wouldn't be surprised there is like some kind of story though. There's probably you gonna know. be something. There's gonna be some kind of something to string you along to kind of like keep you playing. But it's probably not gonna be anything super huge. I mean, think about it. like if you were one of those people in the vault that literally just got released, you're not gonna have this huge fucking shit happen to you. Some people literally just, oh shit, you know, hey guys, the fallout settled. We get to go out, uh, go back out, and then whenever you exit the vault, you're just kind of like, well shit, now what? <laughs> I wonder if you can make a vault supplement. That'd be pretty fucking cool. They already fucking fucked around with it before. I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do it. I, in I feel seventy six. Well, well, remember in Fallout Four, it was like you went to a vault, you didn't build your own. So I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if they had in Vault seventy six, 
if they did have it to where you can make a vault, you can only make it in one specific spot. Because it's going to be kind of insane to be able to make a vault anywhere. I highly doubt you're going to oh, be able hey, to make look, a vault this... to begin with, though. Because that yeah. gonna, that's going to just upset the whole nuke thing. Because, I mean, you're going to be underground and it's not going to matter. Everybody's going to build like, their shit imagine, in the vault. Like, be, like, imagine, like, everybody making vaults at, like, the tilted towers of the West Virginia map. So, like... Have you heard about how big they're making that map? Isn't it like five times the size of four? West Something Virginia. like that. And the map. And dude, dark. four isn't like the biggest map that. in gaming history, but it is a pretty fucking huge map. Oh yeah, definitely. Dude, to get from it's the global bigger than to four? sanctuary is. It's, it's gonna be five times, bigger, times than bigger than four. So, get ready for that. I'm just ready I'd for say the lagginess for like the first week of release. I'm getting ready for literally every bug ever because I fucking know that they're not going to come out with this game flawless. Oh yeah, it's Bethesda, so... Exactly. It is 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, I have work in the morning, so I should have probably get, <laughs> been getting off after this. Well, I mean, it's only, it's at 11, so it's not like too early in the morning, but I gotta wake up and take I'll a say, shower and we, everything. I'll say, should we just call it then? All the pilot episode uh, are done. Well, after I finish this game, of course, so we can keep talking for a little bit. But, uh, final wrap-ups and opinions about literally, like, almost anything, if you want it, like, uh, that we've talked about. Anybody got, like, any final, final says, final words? I believe most of my life I go to Caliber 6 and Fallout 76. Alright, Brandon said, I believe game. most of my life and hours are going to go into Steel Caliber 6 and Fallout 76. Uh, Dakota said, what'd you say, Dakota? You said, I am... New Gears of War. New Gears of War, okay, that's what I was thinking you said, but I wanted to make sure. The New Gears of War will be fucking awesome, I hope. Can't Based wait for all Gears. around... You don't gotta hope, it's gonna be good. Fucking, it's gonna be based all around Kate, which is gonna be a little bit of a, kind of like a weird direction to take for me, but... I mean, that's kind of how Gears of War 3 started off, if you're playing as Cole a lot. Kind of how Gears of War 4 ended, I mean, like, it kind of focused on Kate, and then it's just like, I mean... I'd be pretty mad if they, like, wasted that potential and just were like, Oh, yeah, no, that was, like, that was something, but we'll get to it later. Anyways, here's JD! I don't like JD's, I don't like JD's new design. I don't like JD's new attitude. I don't like JD's new anything. Where'd he go I, from see, being like super pretty chill to like? I, I it seems like he went fuck. full military. JD Here's went, like, the thing, full yeah. Military. In fucking in four, he was like, I don't want to be a part of the cog. I don't want to be a part of any of that. I just I'm Hello, seriously cog. just wanting to get away from that. And then it's like in five, it's just like I am cog. <laughs> I am cog. Actually, I don't think it's really the COG, though, that they are. Like, because the, their armor looks pretty fucking weird to be, like, the new COG. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's, like, a, um... Neo-COG! Like, a, the COG of chains. Because I really doubt, like, didn't that old woman or whoever, like, die in 4? Of the leader? Yeah. Okay, so leader of the resistance, I wouldn't yes. Case yes. mother. Oh, I meant, like, the leader of the COG, that chick. Man, that would be some fucked up oh, shit. Oh, you mean, um... Me. Everybody's thinking that Oscar's the one that's, like, dying in the beginning of the trailer, and I'm just like... Oh, I mean, you mean the dude, woman with glasses that's, like, a cunt the entire game? Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember know. if she dies or not. I don't think so. No, I think she lives. Dude, if Oscar dies, she's though, not, bro, she's not really just, the bad guy, if you really think about it. I they remember that she was doing her Prescott. job. And, like, Anybody else they remember knew that? more information than her, and she was like, I don't like that. Anybody else remember, like, oh, shit, it's new Prescott. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking bitch ass new press card. This Prescott. year's looks no like it's gonna card. be like another type of oh, only two players through the entire campaign because they look pretty divided on like. Yeah. It looks like it's going to strictly be. I already uh, already Del know what one of the level Kate. segments are gonna be. What's that? You know the part of the trailer where Kate's on the little you know parasailing thing while Dale's driving the snowmobile across the ice. Yes. It's gonna be one of the things where you're playing as Kate shooting people from above. While or Dale's Dale driving while... Or you play yeah. as Dale driving while Kate's shooting. 
Yeah, I'd rather probably. have the AI be shooting than trying to drive, because good god. Upon melancholy hill where the grass is AI barely know how to use a shotgun in the game, so I don't know how they would drive. What the fuck am I doing? With that being Listen. said, though... I don't know. Do we end it here? Or does it go on for a full 24 hours? Uh, uh it's whatever. I say I think we have plenty of footage right now. We can edit this whole yeah. discussion out. I mean, exactly. Everybody, of footage. fucking yeah. yeah, three hours worth nearly. <laughs> Everybody, thank you guys for watching the first ever episode of fucking what we call it, the Waste Basket. Yeah. <laughs> Waste Basket um, Podcast. I'm gonna have to get used to saying that uh, if we're gonna keep doing these. I think there's people um, who have already done the waste basket. Well, I mean, if so, then I'll change the name and then I'll like crappily edit in like my voice saying something else Not or something. The waste I don't fucking basket. know. Everybody, like, stay tuned for the ex next episode of Not the Waste Basket Podcast, ever, you know? <laughs> Mountain Dew is the best soda ever made. Podcast! <laughs> Uh, but seriously though, thank everybody that came out to the fucking stream while I was live. Thank everybody watching this on 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 the tubes. And, thank uh, all you know, three of you. Thank all four. Actually, thank you. Um, oh fuck, it's a big Grim Reaper. Hey buddy. <laughs> fuck you. And everybody, oh, you, you guys have a nice night and or day, depending on when you watch this. I ah. guess. Uh, no fear. Yeah, we'll see y'all later. <laughs> no fear. No.